Welcome back to the Nullify Take, where we've got the TNT takes for you on the challenge. CBS also today on Reality Realness with three S's. I'm your host, Chris, and with me today is my friends and co-hosts, Chantal and Drew. Chantal, I'm going to come over to you, the person who keeps it the realist here on the podcast. What do you think of the challenge, CBS, as we're approaching it now and we're getting closer to it? Uh, we're doing a bit of a fantasy draft here. Do you have a plan in place? Are you ready for this? Well, I am ready in the sense that I know all the players. I've watched all of their seasons, some of them more recently than others. So I think out of everyone, I may have an upper hand as to at least knowing what the vibe and the energy and potentially dynamics of people could be. So I do think I'm coming in here with a bit of an advantage. But I also, you know, some of these players are from like Big Brother and Love Island. So I really don't know particularly if they're going to be able to really handle the the, the caliber of competition that I'm expecting from the challenge. So, you know, on Love Island, and the type of challenges they do are like, you know, can you, what sex position is this? And, you know, you see them yeah. kind of maneuvering around in different, different, um, I don't know, wheelbarrow or whatever. Um, and then, you know, you have on Big Brother, it's kind of like carnival games where you're throwing things or memorizing mm. things. It's a little bit, a little bit easier in comparison to what I'm expecting from the challenge. And so it will be interesting to see how these players are able to adapt with a little bit more, like the comp beast of Big Brother is not going to be necessarily a comp beast on the challenge. So I'm really interested to see how well or how not so well some people do. So I'm looking forward to to talking through this uh, with both of you. Obviously, you guys are both experts as well. Um, so yeah, I'm great. I'm really happy to see what kind of what kind of draft team I'm going to have and kind of fearful who of that you praise. guys value. Mm -hmm. I'm fearful of that <laughs> praise you're putting on us here as we go into this one because you know I feel like Survivor I can hang Big Brother. I, I've got a good understanding of the Big Brother players. Love Island is where it gets a little bit lost for me. Um, and I think Drew, you may be in the same boat as me, but how are you feeling? coming into this fantasy draft that we're doing here. You're the reigning champion for All-Stars 2. Um, as we're doing this, we're pre-recording it because we want to make sure that this, you know, normally we love to have the live of, available and in the chat with us as we pick different people. But um, we are very aware that things are happening a little bit differently here with CBS being out and we don't want to get spoiled accidentally before we go into this thing. Um, that's why we're doing it early because we want to make sure that the, you know, the purity of the draft is still in place. But how are you feeling, Drew? You know, you're still the reigning champion as we record this currently. You know, all the pressure should be on you. I mean, this is a whole different league, basically. I mean, you both are the champions for the main season. I have all stars. And then coming into this, I mean, I mean, I've watched all of these seasons I've watched like almost every episode of all these players that are coming onto the show, but I'm coming in more fearful of Chantel than I already am. And I'm pretty oh, fearful going into every fantasy draft <laughs> against her. Um, but I'm kind of out of my element. I mean, this, th there's a big old question marks on every single player that we are going to be looking into and drafting. I mean, when we normally do a, a draft, I think we've, I've only been on, uh, fantasy drafts with challenge players so i yeah. mean you get a rough idea of who's going to be in the house even with half newbies on um challenge 37 you're kind of like sitting there going like well i know how half the cast will work and then you can kind of figure out okay who would want to work with whom maybe we we can see some highlights or anything i mean like Chantel was saying i mean the love island crew are fit they're all like personal trainers and into fitness but they're doing like kissing games, playing uh, Jenga tower games that have truth or dare on them. Like how, am the, how am I supposed to figure out how that translates into mm -hmm. somebody wrestling on top of a giant truck? I have no idea. I haven't seen any spoilers luckily. And I am just praying for dear life every single round because I feel like even if I wasn't thinking of a player, either Chris or Chantel will pick a player and I'm like, well, my non-strategy is out the window. And now I have no strategy <laughs> on top of my no strategy that I already have. So I'm freaking out. I'm I'm stalling. I don't want to start this because I'm already freaking out. But yeah. yeah. And you also know that I, I'm not, you know, opposed to changing it on the fly. Sometimes the best strategy is to have no strategy <laughs> to come into these fantasy drafts and to just pick whoever, you know, as you go through them. But 
I do hear what you're saying about the life Love Island folks. You know, I, I kind of look at some of them as potentially like a Gabo from last season on this season mm -hmm. where they're gym fit, you know, but are they really going to be able to implement that fitness into the actual show when they're out there? Yeah. Um, that, that's, that's the big question mark. Do we have, just before we get into it, and this is, this can be quite brief as, because I know we've got a lot to talk about as we go into the fantasy <laughs> draft. Do we have any kind of point of reference of anybody that has come from Love Island before that have done a challenge and how have they done? And how closely would you say Love Island and Are You The One sort of translate to each other? Is it kind of the same type of show? Because I know we've had some people from Are You The One do reasonably well on the show. I'm um, I, I don't know. I feel like the people on Love Island seem taller. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just because I'm thinking of, of, of Amber M. And so she seems quite petite. I know that obviously we got Cam from Are You The One? We have Tori from Are You The One? Nelson, Are You The One? Um, Amanda. I guess those are actually kind of tall people. Maybe I'm just only thinking of Amber M. Um, Where's Devin and Tori from? Are they from Are You The One? Devin's from Are You The One. And Tori as well? Yes. Correct. Yeah. So, um, I mean, there's a few players UK, there. Okay, though, we have Kels is from. Wait, no, I was just kidding. Kels is from Too Hot to Hell. Lying. Oh, yeah, yeah. Priscilla is from Love Island. Yes. Um, is that the Theo only Campbell. person? Oh, Theo, um, Georgia. Georgia. Nicole Bass, Bass. I, I never look into her name before I ever say it. And it's been like. I never say her name because she never comes up in conversations. <laughs> I don't even remember who she is, which is wild. Nicole. It's the girl with the glasses, isn't it? The one that broke the, the other girl's arm one season? Is it a different Nicole? That's okay. Nicole no. Zen's, Zen. oh, okay. She only had one season. It was War of the Worlds 2 in season 34. She went up against Jenny West, and they had to do that whole, like, there were puzzle pieces at the bottom. They had to climb the tower, and she couldn't even climb back up to the tower to, like, put her puzzle pieces up on the thing. Uh, it doesn't matter. She got, she said that uh, she said that there was only 60, 50 seconds and three minutes. Remember that trivia challenge? <laughs> yeah, yeah I do she, remember that. That's her claim to fame. Is oh that, wow, that wow. Um, yeah. Well, I guess you know the reason I bring it up is because there is a few people that have come from dating shows in the past that have made it onto the challenge and have performed reasonably well. But we don't know how this is going to tra translate coming into today. But it's just something to keep in the back of our heads, I guess, as we go into this. Something, though, that I think that Are You The One would have an upper hand is because it's in the MTV umbrella. And so mm. they were probably familiar with it kind of being the gateway show to potentially getting onto mm -hmm. the challenge. So they might have had ulterior motives. I mean, like, hey, maybe I can get onto Are You The One. Maybe that means that I'll be able to get on the challenge. We know that Corey, I know he did the real world, but he ultimately wanted to be on the challenge. And so they might have a better idea of the challenge and I think that maybe Love Island people maybe a little bit be more blinded as to what is expected of them if they weren't already a fan of the show. So mm. I would say in that regard that the Are You the One Are You the One people would be more ready to do the challenge than potentially Love Island people. I would just say that I would give the upper hand to the Love Island crew on physicality wise. I feel like they yeah. are a lot more buff and built as I think that they are. They work cast out on their show eye candy rather mm. than the personalities that come on are you the one so I, that in that realm i would give it to them but are you the one has done incredibly well on the show so i think in that in that aspect i would give it to the love island folks and that's all i wanted to say <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm just going to say before we get into this, and, and for those that are listening to the audio version or watching it here today, um, you'll definitely pick up that a few of us are nervous and we're like, you know, filling some air before we actually get into the draft here, trying to get prepared for it. <laughs> I know Chantel is very comfortable, but I mean, you know, I don't know if I'm going to pick well, you know what I mean? <laughs> but like, I'm not nervous, <laughs> guys. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm scared. This is the, this is the most scared I've ever been going into a draft. But, you know, um, I'll be honest. I wasn't even this scared when I did All Stars 1 draft and I didn't even know half of the cast. And I was like, I feel okay with this because at least I know these guys have got a history on the show. So they're not going to completely flop and fail out of it. You know, over here, you could pick someone that is a complete flop because they just don't even know what they're getting themselves into because the challenge is so different from some of the shows they've been on in the past. But, um, I completely lost my train of thought. Let's go into the wheel. Let's go into the wheel. <laughs> wheel of names. <laughs> and let's do a little bit of a spinneroo here. We don't have someone that has actually won All-Stars 3 yet, so we don't have someone that can choose the order. So we want to try and make it as fair as we can here. Um, we've got all three of our names on there. Whoever wins this 
will choose the order in which we pick. So they will be able to choose who goes first, second, and third. And they'll also be able to choose if we start with men or women first. And it will be the classic snake and draft. So it'll be if you go first, you choose men. Um, it'll be that you get the third woman pick in the next uh, round. So it'll go up and down um, through this here. So let's get into it. Let's spin this here. I don't even know if I want to win this, <laughs> to be honest with you. So much pressure. All right. Almost, uh, almost, oh, almost. oh, no, I jinxed myself. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely jinxed myself on this That one. is so close to anybody who's just listening to this. That is on the line. That is toes on the line. It's not a three-point. Awesome. It's a two-pointer, it feels like. <laughs> Oh, Could man. that be the difference in this draft? Could that be the difference at the end of the season where they're like, it was so close between those two? I don't think so. Um, because just before we get into it here, I think it is appropriate for us to explain how the point system is going to work. There may be quite a few new people that are listening to this podcast that have never seen any of our challenge drafts. They've never really followed any of the challenge, but because there are people from CBS playing on this season, they might want to watch this and get into the challenge for the first time. So um, Drew is our mad scientist. He is the mathematician on the team here. Um, I'm going to hand it over to him so he can explain how our draft point system work. And we'll share a bit of a spreadsheet. Um, this is all Drew's work, but you can talk us through um, how this is going to work. And then obviously we may make one or two adjustments when we find out what the actual format of the show is, similar to All Stars, where... We've just found out that there's going to be a sabotage, which now complicates the point system further. There's going to be more than one person safe that's going to be in the authority. But for now, prior to the season starting and not knowing the format, this is our point system. And, and we try and keep it really, really fun here. So it's not just the plain old boring who wins the season outright. And different people have got a chance to actually win this. So over to you, Drew. Yes. So... On the spreadsheet, we have the settings up at the top left-hand corner. Uh, this is going to be our basics, and this is a, a, a this is pretty much what we did for the Challenge All Stars too. It's pretty basic until we know some of the more context, and maybe there's some extra like format stuff that we can spice it up uh, and make it actually fit for this uh, challenge season. But I have a feeling that is going to be pretty generic kind of format coming into the first challenge cbs i don't think they're going to try to get too complex or at least i hope they won't get too complex with the format but so we're going to have confessionals at one point so uh if anybody is getting on screen with a green screen in the background their face is and they're talking directly to the camera they will your player will get one point a daily challenge win will be five points an elimination win will be three points kissing and making out will be two points arguments and drama Oh, I hope there's some arguments and drama. Two points. Uh, if somebody DQs, that means they pull out of a daily challenge. They can't uh, do an elimination or they have to be pulled out of the game entirely. Your player will get negative two points. If your players make it to the finals, you'll get 10 points. And if your players win, then you get 50 points per player. So anybody could have uh, a winning player on their, on their team. Uh, two people... I don't know if it's going to be only two people winning. Uh, if there, if we come to find out that there is like a second place and a third place, maybe we can add in some extra points there. Uh, but for now, this is the rules. And we also have some bonus that'll come later on in the season where you'll get plus 25 points for a player that has the most confessionals. So whoever has the player that has the most confessionals from the season, your player will get plus 25 points. Uh, the most daily challenge wins, the most elimination wins, winning phases in the finals if there's a multi-phase uh, final, and then most points heading into the finals, uh, you're bound to get plus 25 points. So we're trying to make this as fun, as many points as we possibly score, and it's not leaning so heavily on just whoever wins, wins this draft. We want to make this as fun as possible, so that way everybody has a shot of making points even up to the very last pick in these drafts. Yeah, th this came off the back of me going into All-Stars 2 with one player going into the finale, I think, in Durrell. Um, and we were like, oh, we might, may, may need to look at this. We might need to workshop a little <laughs> bit and come up with a different strat. But I mean, it, it is a lot of fun if you're listening to the audio version of this and you're a bit confused. Um, don't worry. A lot of us, myself and Chattel might even be a little bit confused still. And we're doing this our third draft on this point system right now. But it's a lot of fun. We will talk you through it throughout the season as we continue. Um, I think without further ado, let's get the draft board up. And um, I've got a decision to make. And Yeah, stop stalling. <laughs> let's get to it. 
Yeah, so I, I am gonna I'm gonna take on the responsibility. I'm gonna put myself in first. Ooh. I'm gonna put Drew in second, and I'm gonna put Chantel in last place here. And wow. the reason for it is because I do think Chantel has got the upper hand here. Um I, I really think you've got more knowledge. So I'm trying to put you at the most disadvantage coming into this draft. Sorry, Chantel. Um That's I am okay. competitive. <laughs> I, I so, like winning against all odds. So yeah. <laughs> wherever yeah. you place me is perfect. Now, for me, I'm gonna I'm gonna start with females, not men. I know we normally start with men, but I feel like for me personally, with the females this season, uh, I feel like there's less that I'm very confident about. So I don't want to lose out on the first female pick. Um, I think with men, there is a very big variety that could do extremely well this season. So Due to that, I am going to start with females, and I'm going to take someone off the board here right from the start that I think this season, um, this could, again, it's similar to my Jordan pick, right, for All-Stars. It could either work out extremely well for me or it could fail in my face because of this franchise struggles this season. I'm in trouble, but I'm going to back Survivor, and I am going to go for Sarah Lucina as my first female pick. I, I don't want to leave her on the board. Um, Sarah is someone that has played this game three times now. She's an endurance athlete. She does a lot when it comes to running for a week on end with minimal minimal food, minimal sleep. Um, you know, that type of thing takes a lot of mental strength. And I think she is physically going to be someone that people are going to be intimidated by. And she has got a very um, headstrong personality about herself. She's got great alliance members in the, in, in the shape of Ben that is playing with her this season as well. She's got people that she's played with and Tasha that's going to be on this season who she's got connections with. I think Survivor is going to stick tight. I am worried for them because there's rumors about a Love Island and Big Brother Alliance forming before the game has even started. And if that alliance gets a foothold she could go early but i also think if she does go down um, in an elimination and she has to do anything physical she's going to be in pretty good shape here so i like sarah she's never won an individual immunity in survivor but i do believe she has won a lot of team challenges let me have a look here i did actually write this down I believe believe it or not i took some notes 22 challenge wins for her in her three seasons so she's she's a reasonable competitor uh, chantelle thoughts on sarah lucina i'm a little bit nervous this could go either way for me here i mean i didn't have her this high and i thought cuz chris like we're always expecting you to go to for the young bucks young sprightly 20 <laughs> she's not that old Fit and agile, but she's probably one of the older women on this season. So I, I, I am surprised that you picked her up this early. Um, I definitely obviously think that she is physically capable of a lot of these things. I'm not sure if she's going to be able to fit in with all of the Big Brother and Love Island people. There's just more of those people than there is of Sarah Lucina's. Um, I know she will have some strength in her survivor numbers, but most of the survivor people are a little bit older than the majority of people. And so I'm not sure if she's going to be able to win enough to put herself in a really good position. I think it is a, still a strong pick. I can understand wanting to have her on your team. I just don't know with the rest of the cast, if she's going to be able to outdo all of them no. and be, able to be the winner. So you're making um, me doubt myself now, which I don't like. <laughs> Because <laughs> so I was nervous picking her this high, but um, Drew, what are you thinking about Sarah Lucina as a as a first pick here, taking her off the board? Where did you have her ranked? I had her ranked at number one. Um, oh, I wow. think that I like her. Um, I like her physicality and being on Survivor. I think we always go into every single challenge season, going we want to see more Survivor players on the main cast of the the challenge because we think that they're their skills can translate better on the challenge. So um, I'm a little annoyed that you picked her first because I was going to pick her first. Uh, she was right at the top of my list. I just feel like she could be, she reminds me a little bit of like a Cara, uh, Nicole Z, uh, yeah. a very physical player that if she goes down there and like a pole wrestle or a hall brawl and looking yeah. at the rest of the cast, I feel like she could win in a physical elimination. And um, and we've seen her do puzzles and those puzzles can translate well into the challenge puzzles that they do. So um, I think that out of all the players, I think survivor players are better one for one matchup of 
being able to tell if they can do somewhat well on it on a challenge season. So that's why I had her at number one. Just coming into this, it's interesting. I, I had to think about how we ranked players and I, I took a little bit of what we, when we did our very early season speculation cast assessment, both of you spoke highly of her as a competitor in that as well. Mm-hmm. So I also thought you would pick her pretty high. So it was for me, it was between her and one other person that I won't, unless you can remember that, I won't talk about the other person that I had high, <laughs> a high opinion of in that CBS um, round. But I'm sure they'll probably get picked up because in my opinion, there's probably about five women that I think really stands out for me. And she's one of those five. So she's out of the, she's out of the, um, I guess, rotation here now, Chantel. We're going over to you for I the thought second I pick. I oh, sorry, Drew. We're going over to you for the second pick. Oh, it is me. Okay, I I kind of lost track. I'm 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 reshuffling around the uh, the spreadsheet while we while we do this. So I'm sorry. I'm, I'm uh, when you Maybe said Chantel, that. I was like, all right, he's <laughs> changing his mind. He's playing mental games with me already. He's trying to change the draft <laughs> order after he already decided the draft order. Um, this is tough, man. This is tough. This is tough. This is tough. Uh, I think, you know what? I'm gonna go. Man, I'm already gonna do a full tilt here. I'm going to go with – I don't know why I ranked her down this low. I'm going to go with another Survivor player. Uh, again, I was talking highly of the Survivor players. I just think that they have a better skill shot of doing better on a challenge season. And I'm going to go with someone who I was a big fan on both of her uh, Survivor seasons. She played well. She was able to win a lot of uh, individual immunities. And I'm going to go with Tasha from Kagayen and Second Chances. Um, she's finally coming back onto our TV screens. I feel like she uh, wants to compete, and I'm really excited to see her compete. I don't know why on my initial rankings I have her seventh. Um, wow. Yeah, that's very low. I should have put her in the top five, um, but I'm going to take her with my number one uh, pick, number two overall. So, yeah. Chantel, yeah. thoughts? Yeah. Definitely had Tasha in my top few um, rankings here. I think she's obviously a great pick. I think I want to see how well she does. I want to see, you know, as you guys both have already said, the, the Survivor players, I do feel as though they're going to most likely do better than, you know, Big Brother or... Um, you know, uh, Love Island in like a head-to-head type combat. And so I think she's a great pick. I, I, like, yeah, I probably would have taken her maybe next to her with the one after, so... Yeah, she's pretty. That's pretty good. She was in my top five. She was fifth. Yeah, she was. She 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 just cracked that knot. And the only reason, it's funny enough, because you know uh, Chantel tried to get into my head earlier, but the only reason I didn't have her higher than that is because she's forty five. You know, so she's not the <laughs> Tasha that played like you know back in the day. She's not thirty eight or thirty seven when she won a lot of those immunities, and she won all three of her immunities in the first season she played. She didn't win it in the second season that she played. So, um, but. She had a really good social game. She placed sixth and second in both of those seasons. Um, I do think that there is a lot of people, when we're looking at Survivor players, and let's say Survivor's Alliance goes pear-shaped here because we're tilting heavily towards Survivor in our first two picks. She's one of those people, I think, that can transcend over to other alliances. I think she could get along with the likes of a Tiffany or other people in the Big Brother or Love Island. I think people will gravitate towards her, having maybe a little bit more of that... um, mother energy or things like that i think people will gravitate towards her so i think socially it's a really good pick actually like i like this pick more for her socially than physically because i don't know what shape she is in coming into the show we've seen with all stars when people have gone out of the arena and they haven't done a show like this who knows if tasha expected to get the call to go and do the challenge and if she actually (laughs) i don't think she would have and who knows where she is physically in her life and if she's actually physically prepared for what's coming her way but i do do like the pick she's in my top five still so not a not a bad pick chantelle we're going to come over to you you're getting the third overall female pick and this is going to be your first female pick and then you're going to go over to your first guy pick and overall first guy pick for this draft so i'm going to step away from survivor even though there's a couple people or at least one person that i'm like oh maybe i should take i'm not sure but i'm going to go with angela So Angela's from Big Brother 20. And the reason why I'm choosing Angela is A, um, as Chris usually likes it, she's young. Um, She was, I know it was Carnival Games. Give me a trouble, Chantel. 
but she <laughs> but she was really good at a lot of the competitions on Big Brother and they do kind of test odd different things and so she was still a pretty good competitor there um she is a competitive gymnast I believe and she used to do pole vault which is also very challenging I don't know of that many people that can take a pole and flip themselves over a bar and do that competitively um I don't know if she was training for the Olympics or if she was was in the Olympics but just being a, a gymnast and being able to do pole vault I feel like she's going to have a really good balance and she's going to be really good at things that we're not expecting her to necessarily be good at and if she has the mind for big brother games that puzzle element might come into play and she might be really well-rounded so I didn't want to let her get taken off the board any further down because I do think that she is somebody that could win a lot of dailies I feel like she would be surprised but like she'll be very good at a lot of things and I wanted to make sure that I had her on my team so I'm taking Angela Any Drew thoughts? what's your thoughts on on this pick uh solid solid choice very solid choice um again don't know why I have her at the 10th spot um but I, I think it's a solid choice. Um, I'm team spot, and you think it's fine? Like, uh, my, my mind's blown that you had a team spot. Like, I had <laughs> as my she was my third overall, and I don't think you would have gotten her unless this was some personal bias. So I can say this now, so you guys will know who's going to come next for me. But you know, there's some personal biases as to who's I'm going to pick second in my draft pick for the females. Um, but you know, I, I think Angela is solid. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter. You guys can't stop me from taking her next in any case. But, you know, <laughs> it's a uh, Angela Angela is uh, is a competitor. So I'm just surprised that you had her on team spot here, Drew. You're blowing my like mind an, right now. An Olympic athlete? Like, come on. <laughs> I don't know if she's an Olympic. I think she was I, but, at like, a trained for it, high, at least. Like, Yeah, she was at a high level in, in the U.S. in any case. And, and, yeah, I mean, even in that season, sorry to take your spot here, Drew, but she won, I think, three hohs two vetoes i know it doesn't maybe translate over to what's going to be used on the challenge but i do think she's a competitor and i also think she's a younger version of sarah in some degrees where people she's got an she you know some people have got this aura about them where the, people don't want to mess with them i don't think people want to mess with angela like i think people are just gonna see her and say and she she's might tall. get advice from case casey right? Exactly. Like they're from the same season. Casey's really good at this game. They were in an alliance together when she won her season. And so I wouldn't be surprised if Angela's like, Hey, Casey, like, I know you do really well in the main season. Can you give me some tips on to how to do well this season? So I think that she also might have a, yeah. a leg up there as well. Sorry, I cut you off, Chris. Yeah. And I cut Drew off. <laughs> Drew, <laughs> tell us why you, tell us why you, you've got us so low. Um, well, going back to the Olympic thing, uh, I, let's remember that Paulie also trained for the Olympics and Lolo Jones Wasn't also went Bob to the Olympics sledding? Bob and, sledding. Both, <laughs> and both didn't do well on the challenge. All right. Uh, anyways, um, I think the, why I had Angela so low is the connections. I think physically she can do That's well, true. uh, but the connections is that she is one of the more outside of the BB Alliance that is coming in from, she is one of the only like three players on that were or two players i think only two or three players that are going to be featured from big brother that haven't that wasn't on big brother 23 um so i was worried for her that if if push comes to shove she could be caught in the crosshairs or crossfires that oh we're going to take a shot at big brother but we're not going to take a shot at the big alliance or the big brother 23 alliance we're going to we're, we'll take a friendly fire shot at Angela. I'm not saying that she can't win eliminations, but I mean, if she gets thrown in over and over and over again, uh, that could like be, be worrisome. Smarter, but I mean, I, I feel like she's going to be playing smarter. I feel like she's not necessarily going to be like I'm Team Big Brother. I wouldn't be surprised if she kind of branched out and not necessarily uh, latched onto those people. But we'll see. That could we'll be a weakness or a strength. It could be Pardon? a weakness or a strength because it could definitely be a weakness or a strength because if you look at the cookout alliance, it's such a public alliance. It got, you know, headline news in America. So even someone like, you know, I don't know, whoever hasn't been in this realm of reality TV for a long time, I'm sure they would have heard about it. So they'll come into the show hearing, oh, the cookout alliance, the full alliance is basically in this game. That could either put a target on them or not. You know what I mean? So for Angela to not be a part of that alliance directly could work out in her favor where she can shift between different factions. So I agree with you, Chantel. I think there's, I like this pick and, and you picking her and all three of these women being on my top five that I said there's only five that I think really stand out for me. I think I made the right choice to pick females yeah, first here in this draft. I'm, I'm very, very happy with that choice. You're so probably going to get you, your next best point. 
in practice pack. Hmm? Exactly. And I'm, I'm happy it's it's played out so far. It's going according to the plan, which is weird for me because <laughs> normally I'm one or two picks in and I have to change the plan, you know? Chantel, who's your first guy pick and the overall first I guy mean, pick here for the draft? You know that I can't do anything else, but I have to support my guy, yeah. Mr. Tyson Apostle. You know, he is older, absolutely, but he's always been good at stuff, um, good at challenges. He still plays pickleball, as far as I've, I've been hearing. Um, I think that if he's going to go back, he's going to go back to win. Like, he he said that he was, he's kind of retired from all these type of shows. And so... He's going back to win some money for his family, um, I'm, I'm assuming. Because uh, we, we have this point system going on, he will probably get like a lot of confessional points. Like he is, I feel, he's always the confessional king, the, 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 the person that tells the story of the season. And I don't expect that to change here. I'm sure that's what CBS is relying on him for, is to be the narrator here. So I think that even if he doesn't get all the points necessarily for eliminate, not eliminations, but for dailies or, or whatever, um, I definitely think that he will be one that will narrate the season. So hopefully lots of confessionals. He's not shy about speaking his mind. So he might get in a couple of little spats as well. And he's also very loyal. So I think he's going to be very helpful to the survivor grouping of people. And people are good from survivor are going to want to keep him around. So I feel like he might be insulated Hopefully some of the other players are going to be a little bit starstruck with him and not want to get him out. So I'm hoping that Tyson will stick around for a while. Um, taking a little bit of a gamble with him, but I could never, ever let you two have him on your team. Yeah, he would have been gone. If you didn't pick him, I'm sure he would have been gone. He was my number one pick as well. Drew, what do you think of Tyson here as Chantel's number one pick? Um, I had Tyson at number two on my... Um... On my rankings i think tyson is a big name i think he again we were talking about survivor players and doing well um and i think that i think that that tyson will get a lot of confessionals my worry is that he is the biggest name and the biggest catch on just looking at the guy side i mean he has the best resume he has the biggest resume and i think that could be worrisome uh so i do think that he could be seeing some shots taken at him uh, and it just depends on who he's going up against and what the elimination style is. But I don't hate the pick. I mean, he was my number two. I was expected to, I was getting ready to pick him next. Mm. So I'm kind of like, all right, cool. So I, I like the pick. was never going to let him go. <laughs> Let's yeah, be honest. Chappelle I'm was kinda, in love with him. Well, she's be, never going to let you have him. <laughs> I'll, I'll be happy. I'm I'm happy that she, she took him because I, I think I would have been juggling back and forth between my number one and number two uh, with Tyson and who my number one is. But now I'm juggling between my number one, three, and four now because I don't know. Should I just jump to my number seven? The, 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 the guys, <laughs> I just want to have a quick chat about Tyson before we go on. And, you know, the guys, that's why I see it. Like, I think there is at least eight or nine guys that can win this season. Like, I think there's a really big variety of guys that can do well this season. So I hate the fact that I'm losing Tyson here. But obviously, when I made this choice, I knew that that could happen. I could be selfish and go for Tyson off the bat. Woo! Or... I could think about it, you know, and I know Chantal would have never forgiven me if I did that, but you <laughs> I know, would I let, have. Let's, let's be strategic. Let's be strategic here. I love Tyson. Tyson is one of my favorite survivor players of all time. One time winner, four time player, funny, good at confessionals, uh, three individual immunity wins. He hasn't actually won that many. I think that was in his winning season, but overall he's won more challenges than anybody else as a combined 24 challenges in his four seasons from any of these survivor players that are coming in. And let's not forget experience counts for something. This is going to be his fifth time on reality TV. In fact, more than that, I think he's done a couple of other shows that's not survivor related as well about his marriage wedding boot camp, and not marriage necessarily boot camp. the same thing, <laughs> not, not the same thing, but I mean, he's not shy for cameras and things like that he understands production Absolutely. he's going to be he's going to be the west bergman the bananas exactly. of this season he's going to understand what they want they looked at him and thought who can fill that role for us and that's going to be him so i think confessional wise even if he doesn't win this show um the longer he's in there the more points Chantel's going to ra just rack up throughout the whole season so i think it's a it's a brilliant pick here drew on to you go for your first guy pick um can we have a sidebar <laughs> as i'm feverishly looking through uh you just go with your TV. gut what See, do you, that's what, the problem what do you feel? my gut is go with your number two you already put that down 
Or you're number one. You're number one pick. You have the chance to yeah. take it. He's, he's like, is Drew like me in this? Like, I mean, I feel like I came in with a plan. Drew had a plan. Now he's throwing it out of the window. And we're only in pick one for the guys. So the the problem is, is what we were talking about. I, I don't know. Were we talking about it during during the recording? I know we were talking <laughs> off the recording. But the whole trying to figure out what the Love Island players will do. Uh, they're young. They're big. They're buff. And my number one is a love island person uh, uh okay. but do i need to move over to doing maybe a survivor player because i took the a survivor player it at, at, at for my first pick uh and i changed it up and i have a survivor player at number three um and well, who I do you think you would most before. likely get back that's what i would probably do right I don't like think, out I don't... of the two players do you think you have a chance of getting either of them if you leave them is basically how I would look at it. I definitely wouldn't get number one uh, back. I don't think, and I definitely don't. I don't think I'm, I'm going to get either one of these players back. Which you'd uh, have, to, you'd get one of them back for sure. Oh, maybe not. Actually, no, sorry. No, you, no. Knowing you probably YouTube, not. You actually, uh, so <laughs> I'm this like is the level of competitiveness here. right here in these fantasy this, drops, guys. This is nothing new. <laughs> this is the third round. It's my second pick, <laughs> or in the second round, in my second pick. Um, you know what? That I just hard. found I just found out that this player is I don't know. I'm I'm the okay, pain I'm, Drew is going through right now. It is insane for our first guy. I actually picks. I know what he's he's contemplating, which is interesting. I think he has my second and third picks um, that he's contemplating right now. Yeah, I <laughs> so you're gonna lose one regardless, Drew. So just yeah, rip the band. I know. Rip the band I, know. Here. I think I'm gonna stick with Survivor. And I think I'm going to pick a player that was on one of the more recent seasons. He's an ex NFL player. I just found out he's only 34, which I thought he was way older. And that's why I wasn't going to pick him initially. Um, he's got bad energy. So yeah, I get that. I'm going to pick Danny. Um, I thought he was pretty impressive on uh, survivor season 41. Uh, I loved his intensity on how he wanted to rip Jeff Probst's head off at the uh the hourglass uh challenge so i think he could bring that energy here um i i don't think he mentioned anything about injury which i think i would have worried about picking him if i knew that he was like he was had to leave the nfl too early because of injury i think he just left because he uh wanted to so um instead of picking cinco at the number one spot i decided to pick danny uh, because Cinco was only, I think, a, a, a college football player, and Danny actually went to the NFL, and he's only 34. Uh, if he was in closer to his 40s, I wouldn't have picked. Uh, I probably wouldn't have picked him. Uh, it's so, the right. It's the right choice because I would have snatched him right Danny. up. If you didn't pick and, him, I would have snatched him definitely and, because and he's a Danny NFL has, player. Yeah, Danny also has connections with Chantel on the on the on the on the scene, and then she also has a ton of connections with tiffany and the big brother alliance so i think he could have a lot of a lot of cushion for him but that's why i picked him over cinco that's a, it's a brilliant pick you snatched so both my number one or two guys are down like one was tyson two was danny um you know everything you just said i was surprised he's only 34 he's got dad energy but he's an ex NFL player at 34 you could still be playing in the nfl you know what i mean so um i i think that Especially knowing me, Drew, and loving athletes, you made 100% the right choice here because I would have snatched them up. And I'm sure Chantel would have rated him pretty highly as well. Chantel, where did you have Danny? Number two. Number, Number two. Really? There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I was, I was, well, I mean, I figured that I wasn't going to get my top three. I figured that they were going to go that way. And so. Yeah, good on you. Like I was, I was hoping to Jedi mind trick you somehow into picking someone else, but no, you're too smart. You know what's a good player and who's most likely going to do well in this season. So yeah, Danny was my number two pick for all the reasons that you guys have both have said. I wish that I had him on my team, but I could not let Tyson go. But he would have been if Tyson like wasn't this. playing. Like Danny would have been my number one pick. So yeah, like. The, the fear that I have for Tyson, now that we're talking about the num my number one and two guys that I lost out here as well, is will Tyson be loyal to Survivor? Which I think he will be, because Tyson is OG, right? He's an OG Survivor player. But Tyson do not want to run a final against Danny, I don't think, you know? Um, 
but who knows it, it it would be it would be pretty pretty competitive between the two of them uh, we've never really seen danny doing puzzles that's that's the one question mark we have well, yeah, tyson true. is great at that so in reality maybe tyson doesn't care who he runs against he's bloody athletic so it's 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 good picks i'm a survivor fan i would have gone for the two survivor guys here off the bat i'm gonna stay with survivor in this next pick as well um even though you've taken people away here and, and i know this person is very um controversial some people love him some people hate him but i'm i can't let this person go i love to pick pairs <laughs> when it comes to choosing players i'm gonna go for ben mr ben drebergen okay. as my oh. next pick i take him off the board he's a previous marine you know for those who don't know um he has played in two seasons of survivor and he is forming part of jeff Probst's mount rushmore he sees him as one of the top four players to ever play this game which i find a bit funny because he's definitely not in the top four for me personally but Two seasons, 17 challenge wins. Tyson has played four seasons, 24 challenge wins. Tyson's got the most challenge wins. I think pound for pound, that shows Ben is good when it comes to the team competitions. He's never really won an individual immunity out there, so that's still a question mark, but he's still in pretty decent shape. He's not 40 yet, he's 39. Um, he's a winner of Survivor. He's got strong connections, I think, with Sarah and Tyson, the problem that we have here is if Survivor fails, but we kind of knew this coming in. We all said, like, we're kind of willing and manifesting Survivor doing well. We all would love for Survivor to do well this season. If Survivor flops, all of our topics are out of the game because they're all so interconnected at this point. But I can't leave Ben on it. I know probably Drew and Chantel would have let him go, but I just don't want to risk it. I don't want to risk it. Phew! Like, oh, oh, my God. God. I thought I was going to lose my number three player. So um, <laughs> good on you. They were taking them off of me. Uh, I, I did not. Between him and one here. other player that, that, that I'm sure person. I'm going to lose now. But yeah, I'm probably going to lose the other person now. I've, I've got a feeling I'm going to lose the other person that I didn't pick. But that's okay. Well, How my third, go? I'm going to get my third place person, which is, you know, which is great. So thank you for choosing Ben. Um, I mean, obviously, Ben is a good player and he's decent at Survivor. I just don't feel like rooting for him for for three months. So you can root for him. Uh, you can root for him and Sarah. They can, you know, hopefully that they'll team up for you. Um, they'll team definitely up. not going to be <laughs> my my people on my team this this draft round. But thank you for for being here, so I don't have to take them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had Ben pretty much in the middle of the pack at yeah, number mine's eight. In the middle. Yeah, yeah, so, I had him at number eight. Um, and I have him at eight as well. Oh, nice. Okay, so I got one thing right uh, this draft. <laughs> you know, you're doing so perfectly. Um, like... But yeah, I think Ben could get you some arguments. I don't know how well he'll do in some daily challenges. Uh, but uh, to me, I want to see him in a whole brawl. I just want to see him get oh my like. Gosh. I feel like I feel like he's he's got uh, he's got that in him. Like I mean, this guy was trained. He's a trained killer. You know what I mean? Like he went out and fought overseas. He's a Marine. Like I want to see him like see someone that's a specialist go down there and get his hands dirty. You know, I got distracted by looking at the picture of Cashel. I, is that a real picture? <laughs> Did somebody Photoshop his face on like a very scrawny body? <laughs> uh, I can't. That's that? too Cashel. small. He uh, right next to uh, the third on the top row. Third on the third top. Oh, uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, he does look skinny on here. <laughs> let's see but anyways oh uh, yeah, yeah he i wouldn't pick ben i wouldn't pick ben at all uh so thank yeah. you for picking ben and i should have left him there for the next round of my top picks you there. could have left him for the next round for sure okay all the right. next two all rounds right. ben, ben, <laughs> got you my boy better better not leave me down this season you better have a great season um like that's the way i go right i normally pick the pairs and then like if one goes the other one goes and then i'm completely screwed and i end up with Darrell in the final on his own you wait know? do that's we just... know that they're paired up or are you just assuming that they're going to be working together they'll work together they'll yeah, like everybody friends. if anybody knows survivor these two i mean ben laid his game on the line for sarah that's oh that's right he, that's right he's like oh don't do and, and, and one thing we do for one thing one thing i did forget to mention is that desi who's yet to be picked um right over here this stunning looking female she actually voted for Ben in the finale to win. So there's also that connection where Desi and Ben played in the same season. So it's another person that potentially, I know I'm grasping at straws, but he could be working with her and hopefully she does well this season. As I well. didn't even so remember that she made the jury, unfortunately, but I remember her being beautiful. But... Shade. <laughs> I, I, I um, you know. Ben bomb. Yeah, let's, let's move on from Ben. Let's let's move on from the Ben bomb that I that I had here as my first guy pick. 
Thank gosh. I'm sorry. I'm so I'm so I'm, I'm so I'm so I'm so <laughs> like I can make one rational decision, but then the next one has to be like an explosion, right? It's just how these drafts go. You can't um, be but... done with them because we're gonna be watching him on the TV soon. <laughs> Let's go, Chris. Let's hear your girl pick. Let's hear who you hopefully you'll take you somebody say, that Chantel, I don't care Chantel, about. Wanna... Chantel, do you... <laughs> She's like, yeah, just pick her. You know who it is. The next pick is going to be um, Kayla. I'm going to take Kayla off the board. The amazing race. Oh, okay. let's, let's get it. Let's get it going. She's in my top five. Um, one of the things I didn't know about Kayla, obviously I interviewed Kayla straight after the amazing race. So go check that out for anybody that wants to know a little bit more about Kayla. Um, I thought it was a really fun interview. I asked her the question like, hey, would you do the challenge? She said to me, if the opportunity ever came up, she would be interested. She's watched the show growing up with her mother. She is a fan of the show. I think she may be the only fan that we know of publicly of the show playing this season. So as a fan of the show, I want her to do well. But one of the things I learned later on when I interviewed Raquel is that Kayla actually played D1 soccer. And she is a pretty high level athlete as well. So um, I think physically she might surprise people. She's got a massive... Like, again, I'm taking a lot of high risks here because she's coming in with not a lot of contact. She hasn't been in the reality TV world for very long. So coming into the season, we don't know who she knows and who she's going to fit in with. But the positive thing for that, similar to Angela, is that I don't think she's got any allegiances to anybody. She can play this game as a free agent this season and go wherever the power is. And I think that might suit her where other people... Like a Ben and Sarah, for instance, you know they're going to work together. Um, you know, when it comes to the cookout alliance, you know they're going to work together, or the majority of them are going to work together. So I think that will allow us some flexibility in the game. She does have a great dry sense of humor that we just got a little snippet of on The Amazing Race. They didn't give her enough uh, moments where I think that if that translates well into the challenge realm, I think she could do really well. I think she's one of the few people that are going to come into this season who would actually want to go and play the main show as well. So again, I want her to do well so she can maybe translate over to that. And she also formed part of the second, statistically, the second most successful team in the Amazing Race history when it comes to finishes on the show. So getting second place in a very recent season I think she's got that killer instinct that she had from The Amazing Race. She hasn't been in retirement for like a couple of years coming back to do a show such as this. So for all of those reasons, I pick Kayla here. And I am biased. She's a really nice girl. I mean, we've had a few chats. She's nice. I don't know anything about this season. She didn't even tell me she was going to go on it. She she kept the poker face. But I want to shout for someone that I've actually had a conversation with. You know, So that's why I'm picking Kayla this time. So maybe a little bit of personal bias, but I think she's top five for me. I had a feeling that you were going to pick her. I thought you might have picked her first. Um, so I was surprised that you had let her go. She's definitely one of my top picks as well, especially she's competed recently. She's in good shape. I think that she, you, you mentioned to us that she was would want to be on the show. So I thought that she would be definitely somebody that I'd want to have on my team and rooting for them. So great pick. She was in my top five. Absolutely. Um, good on you. I'm impressed. But actually, I, yeah. I assumed you were going to pick her, though. <laughs> I, I left her out because I thought maybe there's a chance. Like, I, I thought there's a, a slight chance she's not going to get picked in the first round. So I had it wrong with Ben, but I had it right with Kayla, which I'm, I'm happy I made that call. <laughs> um, Drew, thoughts? So, I again, I have some spicy takes. I have her outside my top five at oh, number wow. six. Um yeah, for everything everybody has already said, I mean, she was just on The Amazing Race. She performed spectacularly. She was amazing on that season. She did well to get second place. Uh, she did fantastic. She's smart. She's athletic. Um, she wants to be on the challenge. She knows about the challenge. Uh, I think the only thing that kept her out of my top five is not knowing the connections and how the mystery of The Amazing Race players. There's only three of them compared to every other show that's on this season who have significantly more amount of people and numbers for them. So that's the only worry coming in when looking into someone like Kayla, but I think that she is very strong and I would have gladly picked her uh, if she fell to me in maybe like a later round. Next round. Yeah. Next round. Yeah, definitely next round. the next I round. I had to take it. So I would have to take it probably this round. Round. Yeah, yeah, definitely the next round. So uh, yeah, again, me not knowing where to, place anybody or rank anybody i have her outside the top five all right uh drew we're coming back to you for your second goal pick 
I am freaking out. I'm swapping through, juggling through my two through five. And the five <laughs> is two survivor players, one love Island and one big brother player. I mean, it's, it's all over the board. I'm all over the board here. Um, oh, man, what is... see, I don't know too much about my number two player or not as well as I know about the more recent player that played that I have at number three. I think I'm going to go. I think I am going to go with my number three player and I'm going to stick with a more recent player of survivor. Uh, and I'm going to go with Chantel uh, from survivor 41. She played alongside Danny. They were in the same Alliance. She got eighth place. Um, the only thing that, cause I don't think, my number two is going to drop to me. Uh, the only reason why I didn't pick Desi over Chantel was uh, the the distance between her last time we saw her on Survivor. And um, I did like that Desi did have at least one individual immunity win where Chantel doesn't. I just feel like Chantel is more connected. Um, and so I want to go with the connections. She's going to get some confessionals. She can uh, maybe stir up some stir up some drama here. Um, so I'm kind of going for the confessionals uh, with her. So that's where I'm going for it. Maybe we can get a cool new theme song, a uh, challenge CBS theme song. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we hear it. And I hope we hear it on the challenge. That would be a lot of fun if she if she does that. And the real ones will know. The real ones will know Chantel. <laughs> what did you think about Chantel as this pick here from Drew? I actually didn't have her. She was in my bottom third. Um, only, sorry. Well, it's only because I just don't know how physically adept she is um i don't know she's if got she's a condition a right is it is it uh, she's got a is it i forgot the the condition she's got but she talked about this on survivor where she was surprised she could last survivor because physically there's some medical thing that she has issues with i think like her joints or something like that so she spoke about that there were interviews about it she spoke about it um after the season so i'm a little bit and maybe both of you guys don't know about this i read into this afterwards when she spoke in her exit interviews that physically she was surprised she could get through the survivor so i was surprised when she actually even joined the challenge which is going to be physically a lot more taxing i think she's brilliant strategically and i think she could easily um, jump in between alliances i think she's friends with a lot of the people from the cookout alliance from what i've seen them hanging out outside of the game so i think she's got different directions she can go in but what happens if she gets into an elimination that's that's my fear for her sorry to jump in yeah. and, and uh, it just, sounds like yeah, both i definitely weren't aware of that uh, no i wasn't aware of that condition um but i just don't feel as though she like i could see her going toe-to-toe -to -toe with any well, many of the women on this particular mm. cast um, I just, and I don't know if she has that kind of fight that some of that sometimes you need in the challenge. Um, you know, you know that I don't love necessarily Tori, but Tori, she's going to go in and she's still going to try to run through you. I don't know if Chantel is going to run through you. You know, I feel like she'll be a little more hesitant. So, um, mm -hmm. I just am not sure of how well she's going to be able to do physically. I agree. I think she will be doing pretty well strategically. I think she'll be able to be well insulated in Survivor as well as Big Brother. Um, and some of this, the Love Island people. But if they have the rules that they seemingly may take on where the the worst Lost goes place. directly in, um, I could see that happening for her and not being able to get out of an elimination. So I wasn't that high on her for that reason, but I do think that she could potentially skate by strategically if she doesn't, isn't, she isn't last. So mm. um, that's my thoughts. Yeah, I mean, I don't have much to add to that. She wasn't, she was my eighth pick overall here. And and the biggest reason for that is, like I said, I knew about the fact that she had this medical thing going on. So I'm really worried for how that's going to play out on the show. And I'm really shocked she decided to do this um, in such quick succession to getting out of Survivor and saying, hey, I was surprised I could even last in Survivor as long as I did. But the one thing I will say, she did win one immunity challenge um in her season she mm. was part of three challenge wins overall she's great tv like i mean that whole little theme song that we were just humming in the beginning i mean she added to a moment within the show so i think the longer she gets an opportunity to play the better for us as audience members will enjoy i think her personality on the show so uh, i think you know i want her to do well but i'm, I'm a bit afraid for this pick here drew i'm not I'm, I have to keep it honest I'll keep it honest for you uh chantelle next Female pick, your second female pick of this round. We, we've both had booby traps, Drew. I took I took Ben, so you know, it takes all this and that. Yeah, at least I didn't I'm do not that. Sure, I'm not <laughs> sure <laughs> what to do here because I'm debating between my second and fourth pick. 
Now, my second pick, I don't know if they're going to actually end up doing well, but they are physically in really good shape. Uh, I'm surprised <laughs> you still have your second pick up there. I do. I mean, we've been how picking you have Sarah, how, how low <laughs> did you have Sarah? Like, I mean, that to me is I a shock. I think she was... Sarah? No, she was pretty low. Like, eighth, I think. Is that just because you personally don't like her, or you didn't think physically she's not going to do I wasn't <laughs> thinking that she was going to be well-insulated, and I, I didn't... I was just like, I felt that other people were going to be better connected, that are going to get along wow. better. Um Wait, just one, two. Wait to make me feel great about my number one pick, there, Chantel. Sorry, I mean, no, but I under, when, like when you talked about it, like I kind of understand yeah. that maybe I had her too low, but I didn't even think that I was going to get her at all. Um, that's fair. Go for your second pick. I mean, if you've still got your second, that's a bargain. I don't have my second pick for any of, like, in fact, I think I've got my fourth pick. But for I don't the know woman if my left. fourth pick is better. That's my. And I've my got my, I've point. got my third pick left for the guys, so that's that's not too bad. Like, I'll, I'll go with that. I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna take Desi. I will take Desi. Um, I really, you know, I think that she is fit. I think that she's gonna be able to get in with the survivor people. I know that she hasn't necessarily won any challenges that I can remember off the top of my head, but I do think that she's likable. I do think that people are gonna want to protect her. Um, and I think that she's she only will 32, be able by the way. 32 years old. She's only 32 years old. Too young for my team? Is that what? Yeah. Like, how, how can you pick anybody below 40? I just don't get this. Chantal. <laughs> Changing the strategy. Um, I really want her to do well. And so I, I want to put some positive energy into Desi. I mean, I think that she was asked back probably for a reason. You know, she probably showed interest and hopefully she comes in to prove that she's, you know, deserving to be there. So I want to see how well she does. Um, yeah, I'm hoping, cross my fingers and hoping for the best with her. Yeah, I, I, I think it's a good pick. She she wasn't my number four pick, so I'm I'm happy because my one female pick that is still in my top five will make it back to me in the next round, which means I've got three out of my five top women, which means my nice. strategy has worked so far. I'm happy with that. But um, she just fell outside of it, so she was my number six. I think she's a she's a very solid pick. Um, 30, 32 years old, still pr pretty young, you know, going up against a few older people here. It does make a difference in seasons such, such as this, as we've seen on All Stars. Um, also, with her, to give you an idea, she's had eight challenge wins for someone that went really early in her season. She was 11th place overall. That's a pretty impressive number of challenge wins. It means that she was part of a winning team quite a lot. Um, she is physically really fit still. She, like I said, does have that connection with Ben. She did vote for him to win the money. So I don't think Ben will forget that. You know, I think he will pull her into that group. It's just will survivors, you know, last or not. We've got we're a very survivor heavy um draft here in the beginning of the show, but I, I don't blame you guys for doing it because you would have known you've got me on here and I would pick a lot of survivor players. So you want to <laughs> take as many of them off the board as you quickly can. So it makes a lot of sense that we've kind of leaned that way. Um overall. She's a question mark. She's a bit of a question mark. It's probably sure. why she's out of my top five. Because I just don't know who she's gonna she's gonna miss. She's probably gonna get into the survivor group. But does she have the flexibility to work with other people? And I can't remember I her social does. game that I don't remember her social game that well. Wasn't I don't she remember in college. She... I don't can't remember. I don't remember actually yeah. at all. I, I know she was she was close to um I forgot his name now. He was like a Tony Vlacos uh copy or they form part of the coca the coco nuts alliance between him and the doctor guy dr mike and this guy he and he had like a bald head as well they were kind of close in their season they worked together you know who i'm talking about Andrew. Eh, um and he was a real funny character but i remember when they got swapped into a different alliance they kind of struggled to ingratiate themselves within that alliance and she was one of those people that found herself on the outside so i don't know how flexible she is socially um but then again that's one game it's many years ago she's a different person now so uh, i'm interested to see it play out and i think physically when you can go between a survivor player and you go for someone that looks physically in shape from love island you're always going to go for in my opinion for survivor because they're tried and tested so good good job overall i think drew thoughts yeah, like I said with my last pick, uh, uh, she was my number two, and I'm, I'm going to uh, live to regret this. I, I believe that I <laughs> didn't pick her when I she was clearly my number two, and I decided to go with my number three, and everybody crapped on it, and then Chantel <laughs> took the my number two pick. So yeah, I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready for, I'm ready for Desi to just win, <laughs> and just win this whole season, and rub my face in it.
So that's all I have Des- to say. Des- Desi and Ben win for the season. Let's let's make it happen, guys. <laughs> I haven't looked okay. at their. I just looked at her Let's astrology. Can... She's a Gemini, which is great. So I, I like Gemini. So I. I'll oh, I'm a Gemini. So I know I like you're a Gemini. Well. <laughs> That's why we get along. Um, <laughs> all right. So first guy pick Chantel here in this next round. Second. Um, oh, sorry. Second so I'm going to go with my number three pick overall, and I'm taking who I think at least drew was debating or one of you were debating with and i'm going to take cinco off the board um i don't know how well he's going to be but he is an athlete we know he played football in college we know he works out all the time we know that he i think he even has like a a fitness program that people can buy into so being fit is his life right now after the show I think that he will train to do well this season. He has enough of an ego to want to to do well. And so I think that he will want to show up and, and be excellent. So I have high hopes for him. Um, I'm not sure how him and Cash are. They were dating before this. So hopefully that they're still on good terms. And that means that he'll be part of that alliance. He definitely will have most likely still an in with the cookout. And so I think that people will be scared to go against him. And I think that he is very capable of doing well in dailies. So Cinco, number three guy, is my second guy pick. He's the one guy I wouldn't want to go against. Like if it comes to like no any way. kind of elimination in the whole brawl, like the guy's an absolute beast, looks like a physical specimen. I don't know anything about Cinco, but I probably, as someone that likes athletes, I probably would have picked him in this next round. Um, so I think it's a good pick here. Uh, looking at the rest of the people that are out there, the only thing that I would have had to weigh in my head is like, do I go for someone who could strategically and physically potentially run this game still? Because I do think there's maybe one or two players still left on the board that could do that. Or do I go for an unknown factor um, in someone like Cinco? I, I just don't know his personality. I, I don't know enough about him. But I think that depending on who you would have picked Chantel and who Drew would have picked next, he could have been my next guy pick. So I don't hate him in this pocket. I think that leaving him any later than that is kind of a little bit, maybe of a disrespect to someone that has the physical attributes that this guy's got uh, coming into the season. Drew, over to you. Um, I think you were the one who were sort of contemplating taking Cinco one round earlier. I think you almost picked him as your number one guy. Like, come on, look at this guy. He's like, yeah, he's like, (laughs) he's a monster. He's (laughs) insanely athletic. Um, Yeah, I was I was going to pick him as my number one guy. I have him as my number one on the sheet. And um, I decided to go with Danny. Uh, I think Cinco is incredible. I think physically, I think he could take anybody on. It's just there's so many aspects to this game you wonder coming from love Island, the huge question mark is can they stand up politically? Can they stand up strategically? Can they do puzzles? And I think there's a lot of question marks when it comes to love Island, but I'm willing to throw all of that away because of how big Cinco is. And that even if he loses on a puzzle daily challenge, I could see him 100% going into an elimination against majority of this cast and uh, taking any and all out, uh, in any physical competition. So um, I'm hoping that my 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 last two picks don't come back to bite me and Chantel wins as easily with my number <laughs> one guy and my number two ranked woman that I had uh, coming into this, uh, into this draft. But I think it's a fantastic pick. I mean, if she didn't pick Cinco, I was going to easily snatch him up. So mm, mm. good job. I'm also going to be rooting for him, even though he, uh, he's on your team. So just throwing that out there. Thank you. Thank you. Drew, um, I'm, I'm nervous. Who's your, who's your next pick here? So I know I've been flopping back and forth for the past three rounds. I've already crossed this guy off my list. I've already written him on the spreadsheet while uh, Chantel uh, was – happily picking desi and cinco so i <laughs> decided to try to calm myself down with my spreadsheet and i decided i'm going to just lock this player in and not look back and i'm gonna pick xavier uh for big brother 23 uh a winner of big brother 23 uh he's physically strong we know he can be strategic we know he can do uh win competitions which he won i think three uh hoh and i think you also won some veto competitions um my worry is that he is coming in with kyland 
and they weren't they didn't leave off on the best of terms the last time we saw them on the big brother stage which could mean i could get some uh, argument points which could be great mm -hmm. but i'm hoping that he comes in he does have a lot of uh, players from big brother 23 they played with which could be a good thing could be a bad thing i think it could be a good thing at least to start off and i think he I, I trust in his abilities to go far into the game, especially physically. Um, so that's why I'm going to pick Xavier. He's my number four guy, and I want to lock in and not double check, triple check, and flip flop back and forth. So I'm picking Xavier. Chantel. Don't worry, Drew. He was my number four guy. Don't you worry, babe. <laughs> you did good. Um, obviously, yeah, Xavier is definitely really capable. Um, he's in really good shape. He knows what it takes to win these type of games. Um, I, he was a little bit quiet, we'll say confessional-wise, and even strategically, he didn't necessarily push that hard. He was kind of like allowed people to kind of be more active in front, but that could be a good quality to have in this game because he has all those so same people that he was working with. So let them be out in front, and I will just maybe, you know, skate by um, to the end. And so I think he's a great pick. I had him as number four. He's super physical super likable and good looking so i wouldn't be surprised if he got into maybe a showman or i know he had some little flirt thing going on with Alyssa. i don't know if that will be rekindled or completely a no-go or maybe there's somebody else that he might be flirting with but i believe he's still single and ready to mingle at, at least at the time when he was filming this so we might get some smoochy points too so i think it's a great pick don't worry don't worry drew <laughs> so I think I was the lowest on Xavier coming into this one. I've got him in ninth place overall for his the abs diet. are too hard for you. Like, what do you mean? Too, too, <laughs> too hard. He's too too much of an athlete. I can't can't handle it. No, no. The reason <laughs> the reason I've got him lower on this season is for the fact that he's just won Big Brother. He's coming in with yes that same alliance that gave him the win or helped him get to the win, and and he deserved it. He played a good game. I don't think that alliance wants him to win another season. So I feel like down the line somewhere, he's going to get sniped. They're going to look at him as expendable um, this season. I do think he could, and and I will talk to my next pick pretty soon, because I was waiting for someone to make a move on the cookout. And that has started now. So now we have to go down that line because I have to <laughs> hedge my bet. And I have to make sure that I also have you're a little protected. bit, it's like diversifying, you're div div diversifying your stocks here, right? So if Survivor doesn't get it, and the cookout does win out, um, and survival all goes very early, which I, I don't want to happen. I love the survival as more. I'm going to be honest. But if that happens, I need to have some people from that alliance in my team. I think there's other players, like quite rightfully we've mentioned here, and, and I'll put him on the board while I talk about both. Kylan's going to be my next pick. I have to go for the other option within the cookout alliance. I think Kylan, maybe I would have picked him one or two spots lower, but because we're making a move on the cookout here, I think he's got a better chance this season because he didn't win the season he's got a little bit of a chip on his shoulder i think if xavier and kylan goes head to head kylan wins that i think he's physically just i think xavier is fit he looks good he's he's model in shape i think kylan is someone that is he reminds me of like a fessy like an nfl type of player he's got that type of physicality to him so i i'm kind of leaning towards kylan i know we had this conversation even when we started doing the early speculation where a lot of people said to me no 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 kylan wouldn't win I kind of lean towards, I think Kylan's going to win this battle this season. I think and Kylan's that's why soft, I, put a little bit more. I think he's really? soft. I don't know if I... I... <laughs> we, saw a different side, we saw a different We saw a different side to him, though. It's a little bit when, of a low I blow, can... you know, calling out blow, his, but... his nephew. Um, uh, definitely, I don't I'm know. not condoning it. I'm not condoning it, but there's a fighter within him. That's what I'm trying to say. So I think if you, <sighs> if you push him, he's he's going to come to, he's going to, he's going to come to play. So, and I, I get it. Listen, we're, we're, yeah, he's got three HOH wins, three veto wins, similar to Xavier, who has three HOH wins, three veto wins. It could go either way. I'm just hedging my bet on the Kylan train this season, not the Xavier train. That's kind of what I want to say. But I also want to make sure that Drew, who's making the first strategic move here in, the, in this fantasy draft, going for the cookout alliance first, he's not the only one who's got some big players there. So um, he left Kylan up for me. I'm going to grab him. I'm going to snatch him out here. And I've, I, I'm interested to see how this plays out. I'm a little bit lower on both of these guys coming into the season, but I'm not going to leave one of them on the table. If the cookout alliance ends up winning out, I need people from that alliance in my draft. Otherwise, I'm going to be left out to hang hang to draw. What, what's, what's the saying? Left out left to dry out. or something left, like that. Left out to dry or hung out to dry. <laughs> hung out yeah, to dry. That's it. Yeah. Words are hot this time of the week, guys. <laughs> 
All right, that's yeah, it. Yeah, Kyler was number six, though, for me. Sorry? No, what? I mean, okay. not that you're wrong. He was number six for me, so it wasn't mm-hmm. that he was super low on my list. Um, I just, if we're comparing him to Xavier, I think that strength-wise, I would put, put more money on Xavier, but I do think that he's physically in shape. I do I do believe he got, he has a little bit of teeth in there. Um, I, I just was kind of teasing you, saying he's a little soft. <laughs> you know? Um, um I- <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I'm happy that to hear you have him at number six because I too have him at number six. Um, he has a very similar resume to Xavier, but Xavier has the win. And Xavier was able to pull the fast one on him when it counted. And I think Xavier showed a little bit of naive, naivety uh, when he thought that Xavier really wanted to go to the end with him, even though they had a similar resume. They were in the same alliance. And Xavier decided to make the first move. So I think it shows that Xavier has a little bit more strategic uh, a, a, a way to get to the end. He knows, though, he's able to play chess while Xavier uh, Kyland is playing checkers. Um, so that's why I had Xavier over Kyland. And I agree that I think if it comes down to it, I think Xavier is more athletic than say. I'll Kyland. wait to see you guys be wrong. Can't wait to see it. But you know, <laughs> I mean, I was, I was gonna say possible like, to be wrong, but I just <laughs> if I were if I were betting, I would bet on Xavier over Kylan. But I could be completely okay. wrong with what the matchups are, what the type of activities are. Who knows? <laughs> No, I tell you, uh, one of the things I wanted to you brought up a great point about Xavier, which I almost forgot to mention this. He played a really good social game and he uses soft skills to get people on his side and to do and to manipulate them in a very subtle way where he's not out front and center. I think he needs to change that up this season. Coming in, I think, with one of the biggest targets, personally, coming into the season, recent winner of Big Brother, won in a very dominant fashion and a very dominant alliance. People are going to want to take the head off the snake, and he is going to be that shield for a lot of people. I think he needs to change up his strategy and be a more aggressive player this season. And you watched him a lot longer than me. I watched about half of that season, and I knew he was going to win. And I didn't finish watching it because I was like, this is too predictable. But... You know, you watched until the end. Do you think he's got that ability to change it up and be a more aggressive player? Because I feel like he needs to be that this season. He people, he's not going to be able to play that same game. I just don't see it. I don't think so. I think personally, I think that the reason why he won was because of, the, of Tiffany be holding mm. them together. And if Tiffany had decided that it wasn't more important for her to um, to be playing for the culture and she decided to be playing for herself, I do not think that Xavier would have won this season. So as, as much as I do think he played a great game, I think he got really lucky that there were some really smart players within his alliance that were not, that he can count on and trust five other people that were not going to turn their back on him and because he had that security I think is why he was able to win the game and win out down the line if Tiffany was playing to win I think that she would have had allowed him to be taken out weeks ago I don't even know if he would have made jury in the season if she wasn't playing for the culture and they all weren't playing for the culture so I don't know if he actually is super strategic but I think that he probably learned a lot from playing his season so I think that he still could do well because he's very likable people and he's pretty unassuming and so I want to see what happens. I want to see if he can change it up. I want to see if he's going to still play the same game or not. Um, like, I'm, I'm not really sure. But I, I, if I'm looking at pure physicality, I do think that he's a very strong guy. And um, I want to see how well he fares. Absolutely. All I've got to say to this as I'm going to go into my next pick, um, like one of the famous Survivor players once said, Tarzan on Survivor One World, the game is afoot. And we've started dipping our toes into more and more of the Big Brother side of things. So I'm going to keep it Big Brother here for my next vote. But I'm going to go for an outliner person in this next one. She wasn't in the Cookout Alliance, but I think that gives her flexibility this season. And it's going to be Alyssa, who I kind of see as a little bit of a carbon copy to Angela almost in some ways. I feel like there's similarities between the two when she came on. Um, I don't know how much of an athletic background she has. I think that it's really good for her that she wasn't in the main alliance. That makes her someone that could get scooped up by someone else. I think she was a big Angela fan from memory in that big row. I think she talked about Angela on the live feeds 
and things like that. So I think her and Angela automatically will have a little bit of uh, a connection or they'll get along. So potentially with Angela, she could be someone that could float in between alliances here. She got seventh place in her season, two veto wins. Um, Xavier is not going to come after her. He had a crush on her that season and flirted with her. They a little kinda, bit. So I think I they kind of dated too a little bit. They may have gave given it a try. Um, so so maybe maybe there's a mutual respect there. They're not going to be coming after each other. So I think that if the that alliance works out, I think she's one of the younger players at 25. She looks physically in shape. I kind of want to put a little bit of money on her. She's a bit of a wild card here. I like to keep it wild, you know, and I, I know Tiffany is the main person, strategic person, but at this stage, I don't think I'm giving much away. I don't know how she's going to do. She's one of the older ladies here. I don't know if she's physically going to be up in shape. Older to ladies. Do. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, don't, I just don't see, I don't see Tiffany coming in and dominating this season like she did in Big Brother, but I could be completely wrong. But I definitely want to make sure I've got that Big Brother side. So since we have started playing that game, Drew has forced us into the next phase of this draft. I'm going to keep it uh, Big Brother strong here. Drew, what do you think of um, this move here? You looked excited and then also bemused by this pick when I picked Alyssa. Uh, can we not put the blame on me for picking Xavier and saying that I shifted <laughs> this draft? I just picked you shifted it. Um, uh, let's just be... I'll, I'll, I'm happy you know what you're doing, Drew. Don't play innocent. You know what you did. <laughs> I'm happy that you picked... Alyssa, because my next pick is up for grabs and I'm next up. And then when you picked Alyssa, I was. Would it have come uh, back to me? That's what I need to know. Would she have. Yeah, no. if, if I didn't pick her here, would she. Oh, okay, well, it depends on what, what Drew does. But um, Alyssa, for me, one, two, three, four. She was number five for me. So I definitely was thinking that she might do well. I don't know. She's not super physical. Why are you so. What are you making the face for, Drew? Because <laughs> I think my rankings are way worse than you guys. <laughs> Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. I had well, her the number what... 13. Wow. I, mean, I understand that she's super skinny and like kind of petite, but she actually was pretty good at knowing the strategy and she kind of got locked into a bit of a showman's. And so she wasn't mm. able to play, I would say, as hard as she would if she was on her own. Um, she was on the block at first, like she was first nominated, and then she was able to get all the way to number to seventh place. And the only reason why she went out of the game at that point was because the cookout was good is right there so strong the six members of the cookout left and so there was no way that she was going to be staying with them having their mission so i just think that she is very capable of finding some guy to protect her because she definitely is really capable of you know getting getting into some sort of flirt man's relationship showman's whatever but then she's also been decent at at competition so I wouldn't put her at number 13, um, but I can understand her not going super high because she isn't that physical. Yeah. So you said that, she, oh, I'm talking to Chris, I, that she reminded you of Angela in some ways. Uh, when I looked at her, I instantly thought of Amber M from the Challenge 36. Oh, yeah. And thinking of Amber getting rocked by Amber in the hall brawl. Um, that's the only thing that played off in my mind. Uh, yes, she wasn't in the cookout alliance, which could be good. It could also be that she's not fully in with everybody else and in the in crowd uh, with her own big brother players that she played with. So uh, that's why I have her at 13 and take whatever I say with a grain of salt, because uh, this is a, uh, I, this isn't in the challenge realm yet <laughs> and we're just speculating here right like there's a lot of speculation <laughs> happening here today i mean we, we don't know what's going to play out there um it could be a strength or a weakness for her um, yeah. I, i'm leaning towards they need her as a number in the season and that they're going to try and keep the numbers strong and hopefully she's got flexibility Chantel, um any final thoughts here on Alyssa? i know you said she, you, your overall think she wouldn't have come back to me no i i don't i don't, th I don't think so because if i have right number five um most likely I would I would have received her. So especially if knowing that you had her at 13, yeah, I, I would have taken her next. So I've got my um number one female, number three female, and number six female currently. That's that's how this has gone for me so far. So I'm okay with that. It's not it's, it's not a good. bad start to the to the female side. And I've well that's I felt what you like should expect, right? right? Those would be the yeah. numbers that you should be hitting. So if you start yeah. first. So that's great. And, and I think that's the importance of 
having the females as the first pick this this draft i think that might just be the biggest play <laughs> towards the end of the season if it works out the way i think it may work out um drew we're going to come over to you for your next female pick how does it feel over there in the middle have you ever been in the middle of one of these I've, yeah I've been once before, i've right? only been in the middle except for except challenge all stars three one uh yeah because oh, wow. i got to choose the order i was always second uh, i was always playing second fiddle um I'm going to pick my number four pick and again, take that for what you will, uh, because my number, <laughs> so four, my number 14th pick. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick, um, someone from love Island, someone who I rooted for in their season, uh, despite the season being not the best season. And then it was a heartbreaker from when uh, the real truth came out about her relationship and the guy that she won with. Uh, and she is a winner. Uh, and I'm going to pick Justine from Love Island season two when they were on top of a Las Vegas hotel. Um, yes. Yeah. Just double checking to make yeah, sure yeah, I'm yeah. not putting the wrong person up there. Okay. I, it took yeah. me a while to kn a know you were asking. Uh, so yeah. I thought you were just like, oh, look at her dance. Like, yeah, this is the pick. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I just like Justine. I like her um, outlook. I think she's going to be well connected. And um, yeah, I just. I just really like her personality. She was really, I think she did an interview with Bailey and she was also on the challenge at one point. Um, she is connected. She has been to parties with the big brother players with the, with the survivor players. So I think that she could go far. Um, and I like her physicality wise and yes. Uh, end of discussion <laughs> that's the end i didn't know how to stop it i was just like i don't know how to stop <laughs> i know I, I really i really like justine she was in the middle of the pack for me pick wise just because she's just a very nice um she she's she's capable of being uh uh like having good balance potentially because she does a lot of dance classes and she does dance videos and stuff like that so she is in very good physical shape i just don't know if she's going to be good at oops we got you on mute there for a second i don't know if you accidentally hit it <laughs> still can't hear you for some other reason i don't know if you got disconnected or something maybe your mic i really i really wanted to hear from chantal drew because from my end I know very little about this. Oh. This is where I'm gonna. This is where I'm gonna get in trouble. Is the Love Island people because you guys yeah. can pick up money for jam here because I'll probably end up picking a Casey, which didn't do too bad for me in the season that I picked her. But I just don't know what I don't know. <laughs> spot, you know, Chantel, yeah. do we have you back? Still not. No. Okay. Uh, where um, did you have her ranked, by the way? Because now this is your turn to get me with. I had her at number thirteen or something. I, I had her at number twelve. I had a number okay. 12. I, I, and Chantal had her at number six, eight. So Chantal had her higher than, than myself. I, I just don't like, I'm going to be honest. Like a lot of the love Island people, I kind of put them in the same bracket as the, I don't know anything about them kind of bracket. I, mm -hmm. I don't know how they're going to play out. So um, you could look at it two ways. You could, get a steal you probably could have left her a little bit longer with me i don't know chantelle probably is the person you have to be the most worried about because she's got that knowledge about love island and might be able to prevent you from getting a steal here when it comes to the love island cast members but for myself you probably could have left her a little bit for me because i just won't have much to say about her i won't know much about what these love island folks are going to bring to the game it's like we said in the beginning of the podcast you know it's uh it could either go really well for them or it can go downhill down a cliff you know and and i think that's the the mystery that love island brings to the show one of the things that i'm interested in drew is that you know the challenge is set that they want this to become like the next sport they want this to be all about athleticism but then they're still casting love island people in there um <laughs> you kind of want to think to yourself like what is it that they're like do they want their cake and eat it too or what direction i feel like they don't even know what they want to do at this stage with the show i, yeah, I think much. what's I think the reason why they're doing that is that they're hoping to have an emergence of a big star and then catapulting off of the, 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 the success of some of these characters. Like people love Justine. They want to mm. back Justine. And so if she emerges as this great, the challenge star, I think it's going to be really good for them to really build their audience. And so I think that they're just mm. hoping that some stars will emerge from these different franchises and then it will change maybe the type of people that 
will want to participate in Love Island because if that's going to be the new gateway show to get on CBS The Challenge, it might increase the popularity and then maybe the ethnicism it raises. Well. Yeah, I, I think you're you're right, and it's it is still a TV show at the end of the day. So I'm very interested to see what the sort of how like we just spoke about all stars three starting and having this ominous mood and we can see the evolution from all stars one to two to three and it's becoming more a mix between the og all stars one vibe friends hanging out and the mainstream cutthroatness like it's it's getting a mix of that i'm really interested to see where cbs starts off like is this going to be this is a sport america's fifth largest sport this is what we do uh, you know hoorah or is it going to be a little bit of a mix? You know, are we going to get like that OG hangout party vibe? Like, I feel like with Love Island crew there, you're going to have to see a little bit of that. Um, Chantel, we're going to go over to you for, I guess, your next female pick. Who who do you have here as your third overall female pick for the draft? Well, since we have uh, taken the bandaid off of the Love Island people, um, I am going to go with Shannon. So Shannon is, I would say, similar, in my opinion, to Angela from Big Brother that I had chosen first. Um, she also has a gymnastics background. And so she was a power tumbler. I believe she was a cheerleader as well. And with that, I, I feel like she's going to be good at some of these balance things or she needs to trust her partner. I do feel like she's going to be able to have some of that kind Kind of communication that will be necessary for them to do well in you know the challenges that i've seen pairs do in the past so she was actually still my number two pick so i was able to still have her come back i definitely understand the wow. reasons why you guys pick some other people but i do think that shannon might be a little bit of a dark horse here not really see her coming because nobody really knows that she's actually very very good athletically in a way that i think will translate into these daily challenges obviously i'm not sure if she's going to be amazing at like a whole brawl or a pole wrestle but she's going to be i think good at dailies and so and she's very capable of getting into an argument um and so we might get some points for me there she's not afraid to speak her mind so out of love island females for for right now i think that she's my top pick so shannon yeah drew any thoughts on shannon as a pick here yeah, I was going back and forth between Justine and Shannon uh, before I picked Justine. Um, it really, it all came down to you, Chris, on who you chose. And I was like, if he's going to pick Justine or Shannon, uh, then my decision for my pick would have been solidified. But I just had Justine a little bit higher. I don't know why. Again, it's an anomaly why I have her at number nine on my list. Um, I don't like who I have at number eight. So <laughs> I should have had her higher, like at number seven. Um, so I, I do like the pick and if she were to have snaked back to me, a hundred percent, I would have, I would have picked her up. Mm. It's a, it's an interesting one. I had Shannon as my highest off the love Island female. She was in 10th place for me. She probably would have, if, if you didn't take her here, um, she told, I might've taken a, a stab in the dark. Cause the one thing I'm fearing off for my next round is that if you go down too much of one round, like I've got two survivor players, I've got one amazing race player. I've got two you know, big brother players, like you have to try and keep it diversified, but I don't really have much to say about the Love Island people. So, but I remember Chantel mentioning that Shannon was in like a Tumblr or some sort of athletic background. So that's stuck in my head. So um, because of that and having very limited information about their athletic ability or entertainment value for what they could bring to the show, I kind of had Shannon a little bit higher than Justine on my, on my list of females left on the board. So I think it's a good pick, um, Chantel. Good job. Yeah. If you think of with like, I don't know if you guys have ever done gymnastics before, but I have, and I know how much power you need to have to go running to do a tumbling pass. And mm. that's what was her strength. I think that she's going to be pretty, pretty good. So, and, and also like one thing with gymnastics, right, is that they, they start training from like eight or something like that. Young. It's very young yeah. age, right? And, and, and that's the time that as you grow as a person, your fundamentals are built from that. So for instance, I, like, bring it back to myself but i can only relate karate i started karate when i was six right so because of that i've got very good balance i've got you know I, there's certain things foundations as you grow up through those forming years as you grow up that You'll never leaves have. you like 
Mm-hmm. You'll always have it. It's just she's got a really good basis. And I think gymnastics, you're right, is one of those sports where it just leans itself into so many other things, you know? So like balancing on like a well. beam, walking on a beam. Like yeah. she'll have that balance, even if she doesn't do like you know, beam bars, vault, whatever. Like maybe she just did it through kind of gymnastics. Who knows? Or like, sorry, cheerleading, yeah. but I'm not sure. But she still will have a little bit of a no fear attitude because you do have a have a no fear when you when you tumble so um 100%. i think that she she i think she's going to surprise us and herself why how well she's going to do she might That's be one of those thought. ones that i'm excited to see how it plays out because i could see her if she like we need like you've mentioned like one or two stars to emerge like is it the justine is it the shannon someone we, we can take from this and put into the main show and I just feel like it's it's lacking that extra newbie that we can shout for because the new people come in and you don't know who they are, so you're automatically rooting for the vets all the time type of thing, you know? So um, I'm excited to see what happens. Uh, I think you've got the next pick as well here, Chantel, as the next guy pick. Okay, so this... Since we're in the the love, uh, the sorry, the Big Brother bubble right now for the men, I believe but you you started that, right, Drew? <laughs> just kidding. Yes, I did. I did, I apparently. Am- going a little bit outside of the cookout here and i feel as though this was the person that if the cookout didn't exist i think that he probably could have done really well he didn't um know the game very well but he started to learn quite quickly how to do well in in big brother and so i'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt to believe that he will be able to learn how to play this particular game and do well here as well so i'm going to go with derek x as my next guy pick he was pretty good at some of these challenges in big brother i know that they're not necessarily the same as the challenges are going to be but he's young he's capable i think that he's in shape i I just feel as though he will be able to do well and i don't think that people are going to be coming for him necessarily i think there's a lot of bigger targets around him and he might be able to hide so I'm hoping that he will be able to stay out of the limelight, but still win some dailies and stick around for a while. Mm. I like this pick. I like this pick a lot for you um, in this spot. I think similar to my thinking with Alyssa, like he's in the outside of the cookout. So if there is a blowback on the cookout because there is such a visible alliance, like I said, that could have been headline news over in the US where no one, even if they didn't watch Big Brother, wouldn't have known about the the history of that alliance. I feel like he's not going to get taken down with the ship if something happens. And I've, I've seen him play socially, and I thought he was kind of like a, a Tyler Crispin potential player, but he got cut short and fell outside of the numbers. There was you know, the culture was involved and there was a bigger thing here that he didn't fully fit into. But in another season, I would have liked to have seen how well Derek could have done. I feel like people might underestimate him because they won't know how good of a player he can be strategically, physically. Um, And I also think the only thing that counts against him coming into this season is that he's um, as a taken man, right? He's with one of his former players from Big Brother, where I think if he was a single guy, I think he could have mingled a little bit with the Love Island folks coming in this season or maybe play that card a little bit as well. But um, yeah, I'm liking Derek X. I think it's a really good pick here, Chantel. Good job. He wouldn't have made it back to you. Thank yeah, you. Uh, I would have picked him. I would have picked him if you didn't. Uh, he was my highest rated guy left. He was at number five for me. And um, yeah, I would have definitely taken him. Uh, not the most physically... A uh, dominant person or intimidating person, but he has the brain that will intimidate you. And uh, I really wanted him for my team. So congratulations for picking Thank you. Him. Thank you very kindly. Right, uh, Who do you got next? Um, so I'm I'm doing an messy. audible. I'm I'm doing an audible. We're getting to the we're getting to the tiers where I'm like not really feeling great about a ton of people. <laughs> uh, the wind could blow and they could either do really good or really poorly um i'm going to hop over my seventh pick and i'm going to go with my ninth pick and i'm going to take a shot at someone from the amazing race and that is leo um leo is cool leo is chill um at at this point i'm just picking people that i would want to root for and see go far so at this point um i'd rather root for leo than say giovanni at this point who i still can't remember who he was on his love island season and i watched that love island season i watched all the love island seasons i just he's don't know the who one 
he was kind of loud. He was pretty funny um, with Olivia. They were partnered up in the beginning and like Olivia wasn't really feeling him. And so mm. he, him and Olivia were paired up most like first. Okay. So yeah, I'm going to stick with Leo. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you guys have picked the next two people I was going to pick. So when Derek got taken here, I was going to go Leo. Cause I was going to be like, you know, I'm crazy. I like to throw everything out of the wall. Let's get an Afghanimal into my team. You know, someone that's going to bring the, you know, the entertainment when it comes to confessionals and it's just going to be out there having the best time. Like he could be like the Ed of the season, you know, like I could very easily see him just be the life of the party. And uh, I, I like this pick for you. I don't know how he's going to do, um, you know, he's, he's coming in, he's in the amazing race, but like you said, it's like, what are we picking for here now? It's, it's almost, you want to pick people that potentially um, you want to shout for. And, and, and I'm in two minds because the next guy I pick, I've got someone that's still on the board that I feel like should have been picked already. I really want to shout for this person, Ooh. but I just don't know how they're going to do. And I've also heavily leaned towards a certain way already. So I don't know if I can pick this person and I don't necessarily feel that every single person on my team is necessarily who I want to shout for either, but I'm trying to be strategic for once here. And, you know, like I said, diversify where I go. So you've left me in a, in a, in a, in a bad spot here, Drew, going into this next pick. Chanel, what do you think of um, Leo? He's been pretty successful, right? He had a couple of fourth places, third place in the amazing race. Um, they've won quite a lot of like legs, between him and his cousin who used to race on the amazing race they were a fun team like they're always one of my favorites they're kind um, of like the tyson almost like the tyson of the amazing race. Uh, you know? i mean i was always <laughs> rooting for them every time they came back i was always like oh the afghanimals yeah the afghanimals so um it, I, I was excited to see that he was on this cast list um i'm curious to see what he how he will play without his cousin um we haven't seen that happen before but i do feel he like was he the more competitive no one he was the more yeah. competitive yeah. one. I can say that. So his cousin was, was more he has chill. a no fear he's, kind he's of attitude. No, this guy's got no chill, Drew. You say he's got chill, he's got no chill. You just wait. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> no chill. He'll probably get you a lot of confessional points. Um, you know, he definitely he definitely talks. He, you know, the one thing I just remember most recently is like he's telling people the wrong direction for the clue and stuff like that. Like he's yes. willing to play the game and willing to play a little bit dirty. Uh, he doesn't care. Uh, he was, and he's also going to be entertaining at the same time. So I don't think he would have come back to you because I guess he might have. No, he would not. No, I would have taken him. When you're taking him next, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's great, great timing to pick him because you wouldn't have gotten him if you left them to one of us. So good job. Sweet so job. I've got two people left. One person is my third guy pick. Whoa. The person I want to shout for. The person that I really thought would have been picked by now, but. I kind of feel like going that direction. Go with your heart. Uh, I'm going to go with the third pick and I'm going to hate myself for doing this because I don't think this person will win a final, but I, I'm so happy to see them back on my screen again. And I'm a survivor, survivor fan. I have, I, go I, survivor. I have to go for Dom. I have to go for Dom. It blows my mind that, that he's still up now. And I mean, I understand that you look at the guy physically, he's just not... You know, he's 43. He doesn't physically look like someone that's going to go out there and run a marathon in the final and go up mountains and win the whole thing. But he's great at confessionals. He's the first ever person to lose on a draw and there being a revote in the finale for Wendell to win that season. In my opinion, I love Wendell. I think Wendell is awesome. I know you got to meet him recently, Chantel, and I think oh, that's so see? cool. Should I show you my picture? <laughs> us, me and... us. Oh, I, I have a... Well, this picture, who, who these two guys... Oh, so look at him, Bryson Wendell. Bryson Wendell. Uh, and, I, and I don't want people to think that I don't like Wendell. I love Wendell, but I really thought Dom deserved to win that season. I, I was I, big, and I agree with you. I do I was agree. A big Dom, I was a big Dom fan. He strategically ran that season. He was great at confessionals. He was probably the last mafioso type of player that we've seen of the new age on the show. And I feel like we've got less and less of those players these days. Um, and he won ch 12 challenges in one season two individual immunities so he can win things he is physically in shape i mean he did do crossfit leading into he he that, was but, yeah, in I'm new york like, last week though i don't remember him being that in shape in new york and so i don't know if he's just uh, like <clears throat> i'm not sure i got he didn't seem like you know super duper fit um and so that's probably why i was a little uh, bit more hesitant it's just, like, i guess it's my heart it's my heart here i can't leave dom because i'm such a fan I've, i love I'm dom so, I'm so annoyed that Dom has not come back and have played Survivor already. Like the guy needs to be back. On I should Survivor. have asked him. I, I didn't. I didn't have a chance to talk to him last week, mm. but 
I should have asked him like, so would you ever go back and play Survivor? But yeah, yeah, next yeah. time. I, I just I, like it was between Dom and one other player, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna let my heart take over here. I need someone like I don't have that many people like i said like i mean i'm choosing a team that i want me to win this season um more so than i'm trying to keep my heart out of it but i can't i can't leave dom on the table here drew what do you think of dom do you have any opinions about this fellow do you even remember dom from survivor ghost island i do i do remember him um i remember rooting for wendell to win and i'm happy that wendell won and i have <laughs> dom at my number 12 spot um i Fair did enough. not come in thinking that uh dom was uh a player that i was looking to get but if he dropped me cool um but yeah i think i think you're you're right i think maybe we did we, we could be underestimating him here um but looking at the lo looking at the rest of the cast i think everybody kind of fell to where they deserve to and um i think nobody will appreciate dom more on their team than you so i'm happy that you got got him as a survivor super fan man like i cannot leave this guy out there i i would Never forgive myself if he went in the last <laughs> round. I would feel I like say, I just let all the Survivor fans down, you know? I will say that I, out of the rest of the players that are left, uh, Dom was the best pick uh, left of who was left on the table right now at this moment. So I, I think you That's did good pick a really good, really good job picking him here. Chantel, any final thoughts here on Dom before we move on to I mean, I definitely topic? wasn't thinking that he was going to necessarily do super well but i totally i'm happy that you do get to have dom on your team because i wouldn't want you to be heartbroken that he was the last pick you know or or left to the audience you know so i'm happy you got him okay well <laughs> the next one is going to shock people you know be, shock. Be, like, especially especially chantel it's going to shock chantel because i am going to go for one of the older ladies on the the list so i'm going to get take tiffany um and i'm going to take off the table she was, I don't know physically, it's two people here physically in a row that I don't know how they would do if they make a final and if they can compete and hang with people. But I also think that she's coming in with a massive threat on her head. But I can't disrespect Tiffany any more than this in regards to what she is capable of. I think she's a great strategic player. I think she's really good socially. We've seen her hang out with different people from different shows outside of the game she seems to be getting around i think she's done a lot of pre-gaming coming into this season so if the cookout alliance and love island is a thing and they do take over she could very well be the person that makes the final just based on her strategic game and never see an elimination again if, if it's bad last place maybe i'm in a little bit of trouble here but she was the mastermind of last season she did get sixth place overall. She did have two HOH wins, and she was a fan favorite. So I'm not going to let a fan favorite go in the last round here. I'm taking Tiffany off the board in this next one, and I'm keeping um, the, I guess, very heavily survivor-leaning and Big Brother team here together at the moment with one amazing <laughs> race person in there, as it should be. You know, um, Chantel, what's your thoughts on me taking Tiffany off the board here? I, I'm fine with it. Um definitely Tiffany was a strategic mastermind of her season. I do feel as though if she wasn't playing for the cause, I think that she would have won that season or put herself in the position to win. Um, and so she was a fan favorite. She won America's favorite player. Absolutely. I just don't know how good she's going to do with the survive or sorry, the challenge type physical activities. I just don't know if she, she doesn't seem to be that have that great of a balance or like that, you know, great at throwing. So, like, you know what I mean? I just don't know if she has all of those attributes that would I would classify for a really good the challenge player. I think that if she doesn't get into an elimination, I think she could go very far because I do think that she will be able to socially do very well. But if they put in the mechanic that the last that last team goes directly in i don't know how confident i am with her being able to come out of an elimination so yeah i love tiffany yeah i think that she's good strategically and socially but i'm not sure about her physicality against some of these other people down in elimination and so i just don't see her coming out so i worry i hear you i hear you it's, it's all valid and i mean we're getting close to the end here now so it's it's slim pickings i feel good about 
the fact that I she's a she's a known entity to me. I'd rather go with a known entity at this point than go with someone I just don't know. It's not proven. I, I don't get their personality and their quirks. I could be walking onto a booby trap at this stage, Drew. Any thoughts on Tiffany before uh, we move move on to your girl pick next? Uh, just real quick, you uh, out of everybody who was left that you could have picked, I think you picked the most connected, most strategic. Uh, she was a fan favorite. She was voted America's favorite player uh, on her season. So she's guaranteed some screen time. She's guaranteed confessionals and she's really good at confessionals. So I think out of the rest of the players, I think you locked in at least some, points. some good points with confessionals and you can, you can rest easy that you um, were locking in. I think the safest pick uh, out of everybody who was left. So I, if I had her at number five uh, for her connections, her strategy, and uh, confessional points uh, is what why I had her so high. Um, but like Chantel was saying, the worry is the eliminations. The worry is the physical challenges. But um, I think, great job. If you didn't pick her, I would have picked her easily. Okay, feel good about that. <laughs> um, who's next, Drew? This is tough because... I have players that I really like. I really enjoy their personality. And there's a player that I think I should pick here, but I'm watching her on X on the Beach right now, and I'm not necessarily liking her on that season, but I think it could be just X on the Beach lens. And it's just, I don't like anybody <laughs> on that show. <laughs> I just don't like that show. I don't like how it's done. Um, but I it's think great she... in the in the in the UK, it's really good. Oh yeah, <laughs> I gotta watch the because it has Theo on it. Um, oh yeah, the uh, celebrity um, X on the beach too. Yeah, mm -hmm. I gotta check that out. Um, I'm gonna go. Gosh, I really want to pick. I really want to pick the other one, but I I can't pick. Uh, I I'm gonna I'm gonna pick Kira from Love Island US one. Um, I have her at ranked at number eight. Um, I don't know how well connected she is. I know that she is friends with say Justine. And um, she has some ins with MTV. Uh, like I was just mentioning, she's from X on the Beach. Uh, she she was on X on the Beach. So um, maybe she's single. Maybe she'll uh, pop off on somebody. I feel like she can be cutthroat when she needs to be. It just seems like when I watch her on X on the Beach, she's very deadpan with like, I'm just going to do my thing. And if it hurts somebody's feelings, then it hurts somebody's feelings. I got to do what I got to do for myself. Um, so to me, I think that that is some qualities that I would like on, for someone on my team. So I'm going to pick Kira. I did like her on her, her season, but it's just the recency of her being from X on the Beach that I think is throwing me off a little bit. But Yeah, I didn't rank Kira very high. She was my well, second to last. Um, for the fact, like, yes, she's in great physical shape. Yes, she has a little bit of connections with... Um, a couple of other Love Island people, 100% agreed. But I also with the recency bias here of Love Island, or sorry, of X on the Beach, she's so passive, in my opinion, on how she is on that show and the and the people that she's like going for. I'm like, you're you're that David, really? That's who you're going <laughs> to like ruin your relationship with Emily over, and like I'm like that's winning you over. And so I just don't know about her taste in like men that like I just feel as though she just might not be good strategically and I don't see her necessarily trying super hard to do that well I feel like right now she's in the conversations of all these shows and so she's just saying yes because this is her 15 minutes I don't think that she cares about the challenge I don't think that she's ever watched any of these competitive shows seasons like she wanted to be uh, she wanted to be in a band or she has a band and so like that's kind of I think she's just looking to get some her Instagram to pop off and so I just I just don't know if she's going to have the fight that I would like to see in in challengers um but she's in good physical shape so I don't know if she'll go and be last and go home but I don't know how hard she's going to fight mm. I've got nothing on <laughs> any of the Love Island people she's gorgeous so I, I, she's she's beautiful uh, apparently she's a musician have you guys listened to her music before? Does she sing? Does she? Uh, it'd be interesting to know. I don't remember. She's, maybe she's we get, bisexual. Maybe, maybe we get a that could be oh, bisexual. Thing. Nice. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I'm thinking maybe we get another version of Save the Palace. You know, like a, a remix or something. No, out but there. she doesn't have that much personality though. Like she's not like 
she knows she doesn't she doesn't bring that much energy from from in my opinion like i could be completely wrong and she's going to be the life of the party but i wouldn't i wouldn't be inviting her into the party to for that role <laughs> so. Mm, so you wouldn't want her to be a guest on the podcast to recap an episode or something like that she wouldn't bring the she wouldn't be, bring the energy is that what you're saying i don't i don't personally think so she's pretty Not guest she's certified, pretty even keeled i would say yeah, I just, I, I'm this. This draft is making me feel like I'm really smart. I, I just feel <laughs> really good after every single pick I make. I just want to throw that out there. It just feels really good. <laughs> well, you we'll could be about... completely <laughs> in the right here. This is just like no, some of it's, it's my it's personal fine. feelings. You know what I mean? Like, and I have absolutely yeah. no idea really how any of these people are. Gonna it just do, so. Yeah, I, the only regret is that you were like she doesn't have that big of a personality, and the person I was going back and forth with her has the biggest the personality. I think. <laughs> So it's like, oh my gosh, I I feel like I'm no matter what you would have said, I think I would have had like this regret of like, man, I should have just picked because I really like the other person a lot, a, a lot. The more. person that I'm gonna pick right now, <laughs> probably. Pick, pick I mean, it, probably. Go into it. Go into it. Let us Is know. it gonna be this person that I also met this week? Oh, whoops, it switched. Uh, uh, is Bryce in? Is that uh, Bryce again? No. <laughs> I couldn't see. Uh, <laughs> this person here <sighs> that's one of yeah that's that's one of the competitors i was looking so into. He, it is my turn right? oh no i'm doing guys but wait where, where am i no you're yeah, oh yeah you're, you put it up you put it up i got confused i was like wait what i'm not going okay yeah, so yes cash shape please is going to be who i pick she was right in the middle for me um She's definitely in really good physical shape. She's definitely has a great personality. I don't see people wanting to get rid of her. So I do think that her social game is going to be very good. I don't know how well she's going to compete, but I think that she is somebody that I would have more faith in, in, in elimination. So if you were like kind of debating between her and Kira and I put those two down in a hall brawl, I would put my money on cachet to come out of that hall brawl. And so I just feel like she's just a little bit, tougher you know like a little bit more like she's not just thin like she has some muscle she works out she takes pride in exercising when she was dating Cinco she would do his fitness re regime and I'm sure she's taken some of those you know lessons back home with her and she works out every single day and so I just think that she's physically going to be able to compete if her and Cinco are on good terms like they're still going to be working out during you know their their time in in the house and I want to see how well she does. Absolutely. I, I think that she could, I think that she could be somebody that could be emerging of a, a star. So I'm going to give it to Cache. True. Any, anything you. you want to add on Cache? I mean, just all the regret that I feel right now <laughs> uh, as I look at Chantel's team. I mean, do we, Chantel, do you want to just like post, put both of our teams together and we could just work? Because you have like most of the players that I was going to pick anyways. Uh, but yeah, no, I think Cache is great. A great pick. Uh, yeah, I was going between Kira and Cache. Um, I, I love Cache. I love her personality. I hate how she went out because I feel like Ooh. they kind of pushed her out of Love Island. Just That's because. what I said to her. I was like, you were robbed. Yeah. You were robbed. And she was laughing. Yeah. She's like, don't say that. I'm like, you were robbed. <laughs> yeah, she's going to get a ton of confessionals. She can uh, get some makeout points as well. I just, yeah, it's a really solid pick. And I'm sitting over here with Kira. Well, Chantel can keep piling the pressure on us and keep bringing the pain because she does have the stage. She's got one more pick here to make and the next guy pick. Who, who are you picking here? Are you taking off the table? I mean, we got two guys. I actually don't know right now because everybody here has kind of like a uh, downside. Uh, I'm not sure about... Yeah, tough. Maybe I should just go with my instinct. And oh, I don't know if I'm going to regret this or not. But we said that he was skinny in his picture, but hopefully he beefed up for this Ugh. show. I'm going to take Cashel. So Cashel actually left the show with Kira season one. Um, I don't remember that much about him, but I don't know if he, people are going to be coming for him right away. Um I don't, I'm not sure how well he's going to do. I don't really know his personality. Um, I just feel as though with all the people that are left, I can most rely on his physicality and hope that, you know, 
as being like a 20 something year old guy that he's going to be decently good at some of these things. So this is a really a blind pick just for age and assuming physical capabilities that he is going to be a good partner. And if he has a really good partner, so like say like him and like Angela are together, I can see him also becoming even better than him on his own. So not sure this is kind of, pretty blind here but i think that physically he's the best to choose from with what with who's left here interesting yeah i've got so... nothing on this one eh? like I, i'm looking at these guys <laughs> cashel looks like he can do well uh, the photo doesn't do him justice from what i can see but again it's just when it comes to when it comes to the love island side of things i, I love how this draft has worked out because Drew and Chantel are playing a game against each other on the Love Island <laughs> side of things. Chantel and I, I feel like, are playing a game on the side of Survivor against each other. <laughs> and you and Big Brother like and Chantel, Drew. Yeah, yeah, Big Brother and Drew. I don't know. Like, it's it's kind of, I feel like, Chantel, you're, you're just the one, I agree with him. You're the most well-rounded in this draft because you know most of every single one of these franchises, probably between the two of us, where both me and Drew are kind of like locked but into- But I could flop majorly. <laughs> like, I could be biased in a way that doesn't allow me to see- how well that other people could have actually done. So mm. I, even if I flop, I can, I can see that being a possibility, even though I'm I just looking at your team. It's stacked right now. It is absolutely stacked. <laughs> it is so. stacked. I'm not going to lie. It's pretty stacked. <laughs> <laughs> I, I might be the most nervous I've ever been in one of these bloody um, fantasy drafts, the way it's been playing out. Um, <laughs> Drew, what, what's your thoughts on uh, Cashel in this specific spot? Is it uh, a steal? Could this be the blue chip stock steal here for the, for the season? So what I remember from Cashel is that he was out of Love Island for a while. Kira was going back and forth between Emily and another guy. And then when she finally got kicked off, she was like, maybe I should go back with Cashel. And the production team kept him in a hotel until she came. She got kicked off. And then it was like, oh, surprise. He's here still. Uh, and then they didn't last very much after that. Uh you don't remember him because you don't remember him or his personality because uh, he left it back at home before he got to Love <laughs> Island. Uh, it seemed because it was just non-existent. I don't. There he's was a, so many players. He's that a Libra like him. you, Drew. He's a Libra. Oh, great. That makes me feel so much better. Uh, <laughs> no, I love Libras. So. I um I don't have much to say about him because I had him at number thirteen. Uh, I just don't have. I was I was going to try to not pick him. Uh, I was avoiding him as much as possible in this draft. I just don't trust him. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, that's funny. There's, there's, there's certain people. Draft. I think I think there's a few people that we're trying to avoid here. I've been trying <laughs> to avoid a few people as well so far this draft. Um, Drew, we're going into the next round here, and you've got the next guy pick. Um, and then I believe I've got the last guy pick, and then we're going to go into a, a wild card round where we can pick any guy or female for the last round it'll be a little bit um open and i believe we are gonna be left with one person at the end of it correct yes yep. uh left over so if anybody gets dq'd maybe they'll they'll sn uh, snatch that person up if they're still in the game i think i think it's the audience's team member we give the audience okay. one member i'm cool with that <laughs> give the give them the leftovers um <laughs> This is tough. Why I mean, are you making this, me look bad? Just to say, the, <laughs> this is the, the final round. Here. So it, there, all the players are left here for a reason. Um, so it's really difficult to really come out of this. I'm looking at Big Brother. There's two Big Brother players. I really don't want the meow meow. I really have some eyes on David. Um, Giovanni. David's still looking buff in that picture, by the way. Left. He's looking buff. Yeah. Um, Giovanni that. is friends with Cinco, who is friends with Cache, who could be uh, hanging out. Are you the meow meow? There you go. <laughs> Just hearing us say the meow meow <laughs> actively makes me want to vomit. Um, so I'm going to pick David. I'm going to go with David, uh, big brother, a big brother all star, everybody. Let's get, let's go, big brother all star. Um, He's, I think out of everybody who's left, he's the most well connected left. Um, and he's young. He, maybe he's in a better spot in this than big brother because maybe nobody knows what the challenge is. So he's not, everybody's sitting there going like, what's an elimination? What's a vote in? What's a, what's a life shield? What are we doing here? Are we just, what, what, what's happening? So I think maybe uh, everybody's going to be confused. So maybe that'll work to David's, uh, David's, uh, ad, uh, yeah, advantage. So I think, um, I'm going to pick David here. Um, of course not confidently, but I'm going to pick David. 
it's funny i wish we had a sabotage this season so that i could like sabotage chantelle and throw david on her team at some point because i know <laughs> chantelle was like there's no way i'm getting david like i'm just he, he was like number 13 on her list right chantelle? yeah, yeah. he was number 13 <laughs> So we had like a sabotage, like one round, and we could like throw somebody's uh, person into another team. Like, well, I maybe we could that. do that for the last round and be like, we choose for everybody else or something. <laughs> Fun. Let's do it. I don't know if it, if it will matter because there's not that much to go on for the last <laughs> round, but maybe something to think about for the next draft that we do in the future. Maybe we get one, each person gets one sabotage for the draft or something. We'll, we'll, we'll brainstorm it off air i think in a later stage because i think it could be a fun one to give someone someone that they did not want for the season you know at all um yeah david what can we say about him it's you're right it's, <laughs> the, the guy the guy's clueless everybody else is probably going to be a little bit clueless i just think it's going to take him that much longer to catch on to the game than everybody around him like i mean there's some big game players playing this season um he's a two-time player never won an hoh never won a veto i wrote down complete wild card he was my number 12th um and i've actively tried to avoid love island and he was still below some of the love island people because I, I know nothing about them so i was like i'd rather take a chance on one of the love island people than david because i just but again i mean i can't shame you too much for this one here it is the last round like what are you going to do you know we're splitting hairs at this point Shadal, anything um that you wanted to talk about for david anything that hasn't been said I mean, I think a really good point is the fact that what was to his detriment in Big Brother may play to his advantage in this particular game. And so being on an even playing field with many or probably most could potentially be even all of the players have no idea what to expect from the challenge. That could bode well for him and him being able to pick up the strategy at least equally to everybody else. Um, and so that could that could be great for him. And he could also have a really great partner that is able to pick up on how to play the game. So I think that he will do better on the challenge than he did on Big Brother with having the amount of knowledge that I'm assuming that he's going to have. And so he's not the worst pick here. Um, I don't think I would pick him if it was for like a Big Brother draft at all. I don't think that that would happen. But here he may get on my draft, but most likely not. Can I just throw this out there? That was like one of the nicest things that Chantel has said about one of the players that I picked. He's not the worst <laughs> pick here. Like that's, I'll take it. And I picked David. She said that about David. <laughs> that's desperate times, my desperate times. What? Um, Nobody's the worst. <laughs> next round, I am going to go down that route. I am going to choose the Mau Mau gonna put him in i need someone for confessionals i didn't get leo as one of the more crazy characters in my in my um draft i'd like to have a few characters i think he's good socially and he's good at getting to the end of these games the problem is will he get thrown into an elimination early and how would he hold up against a lot younger and more physical players in the game that's the problem but one of the things i think with him coming in similar to angela or not angela uh, Alyssa, he's not he's big brother and similar to Angela, I guess you can say as well, he's big brother, but he's not in that core group. Like, I feel like he can fall into a few different places. I've seen him and Dom hang out quite a bit on social yeah. media. Yeah, so I feel like they're, yes, yeah, so I feel like they're going to connect. They're at that same age. They've kind of got the same background. So with that, he might get more. And, and, and I think a lot of Survivor players know who he is because he's an old, like, I mean, can you believe we're calling, I don't know what big brother season he played in 12 or, or 14, uh, I think 14, but. And 2022. 20, and 22, but I mean, like, he's from that, I'm trying to say, he's from a different time. Like, he's from an mm -hmm. older school reality TV um, time. So I feel like he'll fit in with the likes of a Tyson, survivor or Dom. People. Survivor people. I, I really think he's going to he's gonna make that connection. And also, um, I was impressed by Big Brother when he came in and we saw him do those workouts in his, um, you know, home. Uh, he looked really ripped. Like, he, he does actually look in pretty good shape. He might be a sleeper. Uh, you know, I'm trying to go for a blue chip stock and I definitely want to go for someone I know. I don't. Like, I know James, but I just think James, it's going to be a tough season for the boy. Like, I mean, he's coming into this. Uh, I don't think he's got the physicality. And then is it Giovanni is the, the last guy from, I don't know anything about him. He looks physically really in shape, but he could be a booby trap for me. So I'm going to the person that I know, um, and I'll be team Mau Mau for the rest of the <laughs> season. Out of what who's think, left, Joe? I would have picked Mau Mau for sure. He was, he was my next male pick. 
for sure. Um, you know, seeing him in person, like he looks like he's in pretty good shape. He kept up with his workout regime since he was on All Stars. Um, I think that I agree with you. I think that he will fit in with some of the older players um, mm -hmm. that we are most familiar with and that we're going to be rooting for. And so hopefully that means that he's going to be really well insulated with some of the Survivor people. So I do think that he's going to gravitate towards Survivor as opposed to working with Big Brother people because I just don't know if the Big Brother people or the Love Island people will have any idea who he is. And so he's just going to go with the people that might know who he is that he might have been at events with um for the last 10 years so i think out of who was left he was definitely the best pick and, and i think officials wise like i, I just got a yeah, feeling that there. he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna get something there um and it's good to hear that he is still physically in shape because that's the only question mark right has he kept i mean he's wearing a hoodie them? but like he didn't seem like he had let himself go you know yeah he seemed oh that's good fit. All right, well, we're moving into the last round here. And for this last round, we can now pick any guy or girl um, in the team. And you know, thinking about it, it probably wouldn't have mattered which way I'm going to go between these people that I left on the show um, because uh, I might I might stick with the guys here and actually go for Giovanni because I feel like he's the most physical guy still left on the board. I don't know much about him. But he could be another wildcard pick if, for some other reason, Love Island gets in and, and they do well. Hopefully, he's someone that can win a, a, an elimination. I don't know his personality at all, but I guess I need to take a risk with one person here in this draft. I've been pretty sensible throughout it. Why have you guys not gone for Giovanni earlier? What What is the really big pitfalls that I'm walking into here? I, I'm not sure. He's just he was always like the life of the party guy. He did. I didn't really see him working out with all the other people. Like maybe he did, but he just wasn't somebody that in my head I'm like, oh, he works out with Cinco. Um, mm. he's, he was just, he was always really fun. I really liked him. I wanted him to stay on the show. Like I, I, I appreciated his personality, but he was all personality. So you're definitely going to get some points with, um, confessionals. I wouldn't be surprised. We were hoping that he was going to get together with like Selly outside of the game and you know, that they, maybe they would have some sort of relationship. So who knows, maybe something will happen there. Selly was definitely rooting for Giovanni when she was watching the show as a fan. So I just don't know how he will do physically. I have absolutely no idea. Um, and I don't know if he cares either, right? Like he does, he's never been, he's not really the type of person that really cares that much about appearances and performance wise. Like he doesn't have that like competitive from what I've seen edge to him. And so I just don't know if he'll be able to hang with some of these other people that are a lot more physically competitive. I think it's just the unknown. Um, I think I know he hangs out with Cinco. He is in shape. Uh, but when I look at Love Island stats, he is said to have been dumped on day 17, which is like week two of the competition or something. And I, I mentioned earlier, I can't really remember him uh, at all on that Love Island season. And I watched that Love Island season. I think I went with the known players that I know can who have made it far in their respective series and that I kind of understand where they're coming from. And so that's where I kind of went towards. And I know they have more, possibly more connections than, than say Giovanni, who may just know Cinco Cache. And that's kind of hmm. the, that's, a, that's the extent of where he goes to. But I think out of every, all the rest of the players that are left, I mean, you pick the most physically capable of of the him of them you, you kind of make me made me doubt myself there for a second by saying oh, he's got the least connections and i'm thinking to myself oh no there's some people still left on the board that have gone far in their seasons that do have connections but then again um i don't have anybody from love island so i'm like you know do i really want to go into this season without taking a gamble on someone from that series doing well uh, uh i feel yeah. like i had to make the choice here but Drew, you, you've got the, the floor here with the next pick. Who are you going to pick from the three remaining players that are left on the board? Now, this player might not be high on my own rankings, but this player is high in my heart. And uh, I really loved her on her Love Island season. And she is friends with a couple of players that are on my uh, rankings as well. And I'm picking Selly. Um, she has the best personality. She is very small in stature but what she makes up for in what she lacks in height she makes up for in just 
having a great time and exciting and and she's i think gonna get some confessionals she could annoy some people in the house with how bubbly she is but to me i don't care i really enjoyed her and justine's uh friendship on uh, love island and i just love just uh i just love selly um overall so um i'm happily gonna pick selly i was worried that i wasn't gonna get her in this draft and lo and behold she is on my team uh last but certainly definitely uh not least in my opinion. Oh boy. I mean, uh, I just think looking at what I have left to choose from, because I was la, definitely going to choose. La, la. <laughs> I was going to choose Selly next. Don't worry, Selly. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I had her ranked. So she's <clears throat> going in this position that I think that, you know, physically how she would do. She is pretty set up with like having a lot of friendships in the game. She is quite likable. If you're not annoyed by her, as you mentioned, um, I would have taken her if you didn't. So uh, good on you for snatching one from my fingertips. I had Sally. her at number 12, by the way. Uh, I, but I she was as well. She was ranked higher than who I have, who are, who are uh, left out of the players who are left. Both players I have ranked last. So she was the highest left ranked player that I had. Well, so what am I going to do here? I have to choose between Aza and James. And... I feel bad because I'm happy to see one of them coming back to play in this game. But I think I'm going to have to go with Aza. Now, Aza is a little bit awkward and doesn't necessarily have like great balance or anything like that. But she's in very good shape. She might be good at some, you know, some sort of competitions in the dailies. Um, I'm not sure all. I don't know if I think that she'll win a hall brawl, but I don't think that James would necessarily win a hall brawl against anyone either. So I think because Oz is a little bit better set up, she has almost her entire alliance of the cookout in this game. And she's not going to be the one that is going to be taken a shot at by the other players first. I think that Tiffany's a shinier target. Xavier's a shinier target um, out of the cookout. Kylan's a shinier target that she might be able to kind of hide. And once those big flashy targets are gone, she might be able to hide even further. So I don't know how well she's going to do physically because she's, as I said, she's a little bit awkward, but I, she is in good shape. I don't know how well she's going to do on, on puzzles. She might be a puzzle master and we have no idea. So I just feel a little bit more confident with Aza than I do with James, unfortunately. James doesn't have anybody really in the game other than Kayla um, and, and Leo, but they're all from different seasons. I don't know if he's watched any of these other shows. I felt that out of him and... Um, and his partner, Will, I felt Will was better at tasks than James was. And mm. so if it was Will, I would have taken Will probably higher than I would have taken James, unfortunately. So I'm sorry, James. I think you're a great person, great personality. I love that you love reality TV, but I'm going to have to go with Aza here for the final pick, leaving James undrafted. I feel bad for James because he's like a winner of one of the big franchises and he doesn't get picked. But I mean, someone was always going to get left out. I understand your reasoning. There's a reason myself and Drew didn't pick him earlier. Um, he could be the person who surprises us all and 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 make us look bad. But I, I, I am worried for him. I just, I don't know socially how he's going to fit in with his group. He's from a, a franchise that's not very well represented. Like you said, he's the only gay person on this season, I believe, unless there's someone I don't know about from Love Island. Um, so I'm, I'm a little bit worried for him. Like, I just don't know how he fits into this group. And um, I hope he does well. Uh, Aza, uh, I think, is a, is, is a, you know, she's a last pick for a reason. I'm a little bit worried for her. I don't know if she knows what she's letting herself into coming into the arena with some of the animals that she's going to go up against in the challenge. But overall, I think we did good. You know, we've got three teams in place. Let's have a quick overall thought about or a discussion about our teams now that we've seen who they are. You know, uh, Drew, we'll start with you. You you seem the less, you know, you, you seem less certain about things at this point. Who are you most happy that you got in this draft that you think, I'm glad I got this person where I got them? And who do you wish you had from any of the other teams? Who do you feel like you lost out on? 
Um, well, I'm going to be excited about my top two picks, uh, since they were in my, well, Tasha wasn't in my top five, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm going to be happy with the, my top two picks. I'm happy. I got Xavier and Justine and of course, Selly to, uh, get Selly at the very end. And I, that was somebody that I came into the draft really wanting to get onto my team. So I'm very happy about all of them. Um, the 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 players that are going to haunt me, I feel, is going to be Desi and Cinco since I was going back and forth the most between those picks and then right before I could pick mm. somebody uh, or right after I picked somebody and had instant regret after Chantel went through the uh, summary of why I shouldn't have picked that person and then picked the person that I had ranked higher. Um, so uh, I think Desi is going to sting the most because I think that she can go very far. She has the potential of going far. Whereas both of you laid out why maybe I shouldn't have went for Chantel as high as I did. Um, so I think yeah. that player could be the player that I, I'm, I'm most regretting. And then Cache as well, because of the potential points of getting so many confessionals and, and being connected con compared to Kira, who I picked right before uh, Chantel picked her. So yeah, that's, I'll, I'll leave it at that, but I could go into way more. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know how well this is going to fare, but I did pretty well. So out of my women, I got my first pick, second pick, fourth pick, sixth pick, and eighth. So eighth was the the lowest rank player that I picked on the female team. And, and that was Aza. She, I had her in eighth place. And then for the men, I got my first pick, my third pick, my fifth pick, and my seventh pick. So pretty much I got everybody on the top half of my draft. So I have to do, I, like, I have to be happy with it because I didn't have anybody that I felt that I got stuck with. It, you know, it was, it was really yeah. in my, in my top groupings of people. So I'm, I'm pleased as punch and I hopefully that they will, as much as faith that I'm putting into them, they will live up to what my hope is for them. Yeah. I think the thing I'm the most happy about was calling out the order of this draft. I feel like being able to go woman first was a key strategic move that I made, which enabled me to get my first pick for the females, my second pick for the females, I believe, and oh no, sorry, my third pick for the females and my sixth pick for the females. So it kind of worked in a way where I got a lot of those top fives in that I kind of wanted. I knew the females, we needed to be tight on them. I feel strong about all of them, like uh, the top three females that I picked, I feel very good about all three of them doing well this season. The men kind of went a little bit off the rails for me. I'm happy with Ben. I still stand by Ben. I think he's going to do a lot better than what people think. I think there's a lot of bias against Ben online, but again, people are going to have to eat humble pie for a third season in a row, and he's going to do better than what people want him to do. I'm, I'm standing by Team Ben. I think he's going to do well. Now, Kylan was a move in defense to Drew that can either work or break me. So he's a bit of a wild card. And then I feel good about the fact that I got to take Dom where I did take him. I, I think, you know, again, I couldn't have left him on the, the table. Um, I do agree that, you know, Chantel, you, you've got a really balanced team. And probably the person that I think I feel like I missed out on, well, two people I feel like I missed out on. Um, and that was due to the fact of how I chose the order to be Angela, would have been great to have. She was my second pick just ahead of Kayla. Um, and then also Danny, I think, was really up there for me as someone that I think is going to do well. So, But I was never going to have the opportunity to pick them. Uh, overall, I feel good about this. And then Leo, obviously, I would have loved to have had an Afghanimal in my my draft. I think you got a, a steal at the time that you got him there, Drew. Mm -hmm. um, this was a lot of fun. We, we thought coming into this thing, we we're like, how are we going to talk about this for an extended period of time. Look at us. And I was like, Two hours and 15 I minutes think in. that will be okay. <laughs> <laughs> we Drew, you look like you, you have, have misery on your mind. He's aged 10 years. Are you okay? <laughs> Drew, I'm you're still going to win, babe. You're still going to win. Just thrown through the ringer. Uh, I'm ready to have one person heading into the finals and uh, just been holding on for dear life here. So you uh, see what it's like to play like Chris? No, I'm just I, kidding. I will say 40, 40, 40 minutes of these two hours and 16 minutes that we've been talking were me going back and forth in my head. <laughs> and <laughs> of, making the wrong choice. Of no, back, just kidding. Going, going, going. Yeah. The, like the first three rounds, I took like 20 minutes each just trying to figure out where I wanted to go. But yeah, I mean, this this was a tough exercise, I will say, because normally I'm coming in well versed. I don't even have to do a ton of research in these challenge drafts or anything. Cause it's like, Oh, whatever. I know boom, boom, boom. I, I, I watch all these, I make videos, I got clips. I know the 
players wiki pages like the back of my hands and then we come into something like this and then we have to do it three more times with all these spinoffs that i have no idea like at least i've watched a ton of these yeah. players and all their seasons i don't get Argentina's me started on be fun Argentina's Argentina, be fun. yeah, Argentina. Argentina will have absolutely no idea. We'll all yeah, be going in blind here. All of us will be taking crisp style picks. I mean, like he's young and he's won stuff. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, and then you know what's interesting is going to be the UK side if they do go I probably will know no UK people if they go no reality stars because I've heard oh. that that's the case. They could go no reality stars and it's just complete that's people not off the street necessarily a good over. idea if they're trying to do a War of the Worlds afterwards, right? Yeah, but well, that's what I heard. And then I'm ready for Chris to school all of us in the Australian draft. So I'm ready to get my butt kicked four times this season. Yes, uh, we should in start one putting year. some, uh, get some real stakes on the line here. I don't know one what they should be, be, but. Hurting. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna we've got to problem solve or, or brainstorm a few more things as we add to the creativity of it. Like, I like the sabotage idea. I think like we should think what? of a sabotage or how that applies to next season. Maybe the winner of one draft gets to do a sabotage on someone in the next draft. But we'll talk about that offline. I think it could be a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, definitely. I was gonna. I was thinking. I don't know. We could also talk about this offline, but I just want to throw it out here right now. What if we did like a reverse draft, and so we'd actually start from like like the worst pick and just go yeah. completely go through and like see who, like who could be like terrible picks and like not be going for. Oh, uh, I see what you're saying. So the incentive is that the person who goes out first gets you the maximum points. Like, so basically, it's like a re everything is reverse. So because otherwise, you have to trust that the person who's going to pick the worst pick is actually picking the person that they think is going to do the worst yeah. on the season so there has to be like an incentive around points for the person who gets the least confessionals the person who goes out first it could be fun it could be it could be a fun one to do maybe we it's do that in argentina like yeah, because we, because we, we will have know. no idea about argentina <laughs> so, so that could be a fun one right <laughs> it's crazy i have tyson at my last spot it's just crazy <laughs> no, 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 no we'd be worse. picking for other people not for right, ourselves so i would be picking for you your team you know what i mean like we'd <laughs> be like okay i pick for chris chris picks for drew drew picks for me kind of thing and we'd be picking like the worst team so we'd have to be strategic still um because we wouldn't want them to get i guess we could also do that with the best team if i'm picking for each other so mm. let us know guys if you're watching this at a later stage let us know what you think of this idea of doing a reverse draft maybe for one of the seasons maybe it could be like the argentina season one of the ones where it's not that we don't respect the fact that Argentina is going to take part of this challenge is just we don't know much about them. Do you guys think that would be a lot of fun? Let us know in the comments. Um, we, we want to keep mixing it up. We want to keep you guys interested in what it is that we're doing and um, not just do the same thing, rinse and repeat every single season. Drew, it looked like you had a brilliant idea there. I had an idea, but I'll, t I'll say it afterwards. We'll, we'll talk Great. about it. We'll, we'll chat. Uh, you know, this is how we work. Um, you know, we don't have much to plug here at this point because this was pre-recorded by the time you guys hear this. We don't know what we're going to be doing in the future. I'm sure all three of us are going to be very busy, but check out the Drew channel, Angel Cake Entertainment here on YouTube for all your premium content on the challenge and so much more. Um, Chantel, Reality Realness with three S's. Go check it out. She, she'll be talking about a lot of reality TV, guaranteed. It's not just going to be the challenge. Uh, she does it all. Um, and give us a subscribe if you like this. Put a like on this. You know, if you're new to the channel, you're a CBS fan that are watching it, we're excited for you. We're excited to have you on board. Welcome to the challenge family. Um, join us every week as we talk normally on Friday evenings. Hopefully this will be the same in the future at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time about every single episode. And we go in deep talking about all the craziness that happens on the show. Thank you so much for watching and catch you guys next time. Bye.